In this week's episode, we're getting ready for rumbles. Multiple earthquakes have rolled through Southern California, which naturally have affected theme park operations and guest satisfaction. Safety first, though. And speaking of safety, or lack thereof, another rumble occurred in Toontown over the weekend, which has us questioning security protocols. Again. Also, Mulan trailer, another Disney legend, Forky fails, and more on this shaken episode of the Mousepire Podcast. I'm Anthony. I'm Diggs. I'm Tim. I'm Dan. Welcome to Mousepire, your source for Disney, Star Wars, and everything in between. This is the podcast where both empires collide. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Mousepire Podcast. What's going on? Uh oh. The apprentice lives. What is this? You best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. Bring up me, Harley Joe. You never had a friend like me. Some imagination, huh? <laughs> made you look happy birthday anyone's birthday this time uh actually today is uh tron's birthday oh Ooh, i like right. tron yeah it's uh it was i think 17th or i mean 37th anniversary is it 37 36 uh 82 right i don't remember seven plus two is nine i believe so yeah whoa math i, I know I was... right we hey we don't do math yeah I, I thought i saw 36 so i, just I don't know was, i was wondering it's 30 something yeah so we're not way, thirty something. Yeah. So yeah, today's Tron's birthday. I will say that the original Tron is an acquired taste. What? But uh, I can understand how some people might not like it just because of the style. However, Tron Legacy is something that just about everybody should like. But surprisingly, they don't. <laughs> I don't get why. I don't know. Same people that don't like Tomorrowland, I guess. The movie Tomorrowland is amazing. That's I thought it was a fantastic about. film. But there's a lot, tons of people that hate that movie because they they have no vision and they're stupid. <laughs> and I, I get and if, if there's somebody listening that feels that way, well, can I ask you well, this about Tomorrowland? You're stupid. Do you think that if the movie had a different climax, that was uh, like they didn't arrive at the city and it was like dead or whatever? Do you think that people would have liked it more? I'm just gonna say this real quick and then we can move on. Uh, you know, people are always talking about release the Schneider cut. I don't know if you know about that, but it's a for big, Tomorrowland. No, for uh, Justice League. Okay, uh, release the Schneider cut is a big thing. Yeah, on the interwebs because there are all those DC fans out there that think there's some mystery uh, cut, a uh, three and a half hour cut of Justice League that, that was turn- actually good. That was actually good. That turns it into some like uh, Oscar worthy movie, like Lord of the Rings or something. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I believe that there was a uh, version in Brad Bird's head of, of Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland that was a masterpiece. And I think he had that vision as far back as 2013 because some of the stuff that was on display at D23 in 2013 uh, promoting Tomorrowland two years before it came out was some mind-blowing stuff yeah. that they were talking about uh, with history and the whole uh, thing with the secret society. Yeah. And then they had all that uh, all that uh, viral marketing that they had online for it uh, and stuff like that. And then I think along the way, the, the, the uh, studio got cold feet and told him uh, that he had to change it and that it had to not be so confusing and so uh, cerebral. Here's what and I so I think he ended up with not the movie that he necessarily wanted. Here's what I believe about that film that all the lead up stuff was great. When I was a little disappointed is when they arrive to the planet or the dimension or whatever it's it's referred to as and no one's there except a skeleton crew and they're basically just watching the 
world about to come to an and end. And I think a lot of it is the end. It was de- it was depressing. Now it's, I still and love I think the a movie. lot of that is I think what he ended up having to change because a lot of uh, the stuff that we saw leading up to it implied otherwise. So so that's what for me if they had arrived there. And the society was all still there, but there was a big problem that needed to be solved that only the girl and, and George Clooney together could solve. Right. Not the world's coming to an end, but that secret society maybe is crumbling. And once they're there, they're welcomed back and they're, you know, okay, you're here now, even though we banished you. And, uh, you know, the security system is what's been keeping you away this whole time. Really, we've needed your help. You know, something like that, where it's not so impending doom. I think the movie would have, been, would have been better received. However, it wasn't, and that sucks. Right. Well, I actually saw Tron with a double feature back then, because we used to see two movies. Remember that? Yes. And I saw it in with... In the drive-in? No, I was at uh, oh, okay. theater, and I saw it with Firefox. That's an interesting... Uh... <laughs> wow. That's yeah. A... Wow. Yeah, it is wow. It wasn't Firefox R? Um, I don't know. Maybe. I don't Somebody remember. Somebody probably figured, let's stick these two sci-fi movies together. But Firefox isn't sci-fi. It's, it's not. It's totally like a Cold War thriller with oh, Clint Eastwood. Yeah. That's strange. It's the one where he steals the, uh, the Russian Firefly. Blackbird. Mm. <laughs> You're talking like that's like 20 years. All right, so we're going to move on with the sad news of the passing of uh, Cameron Boyce, who was a Disney Channel star, uh, passed away at the age of 20. Uh, for, for those who don't know, he was on Jesse... Also, uh, Gamer's Guide, which was right after Jesse, and our good friend Rob worked with him on that set. Uh, also, of course, a big has a big role in Descendants, and of course, Descendants Three is coming up next month or something, I believe, next month. Uh, and it's his uh, final piece. That I don't know. I'm not sure if he did anything else after that. Being a TV actor, he might have other things here and there that might still pop up. Who knows? Depends on how active he was. Um, also, he was in Grown Ups and Grown Ups Two. So real quick about Descendants three, Cameron actually he wanted to leave the Disney you know company. How you know everyone like Hannah Montana or what's her name Miley Cyrus leaves Disney to do their own things. Cameron did that. He was gone. His contract was up for uh, Disney, so he was planning on to move on to do his own things. And the Descendants franchise was so big that they actually asked him to come back. Like please, can you please come back so to do the third one? So he said, all right, I will. So that's a little little insider information about that, him coming back to do Descendants 3. And um, I'm pretty sure he's going to do a good job on that. We talked about Descendants when it first came out, how I thought it was going to be awesome, but I didn't know it was going to be a musical thing. The premise is super cool. Right. Not very well executed. But my point is, is uh, when they started doing the, the musical part and dancing and all that, them choosing him is a, uh, was a great choice. Because I don't know if anyone actually knows that he was actually in a group called the B-Boys, which is a dance group in L.A. where they just, you know, they go to competitions. Kind of like, uh, what's that movie with the dancers? Uh, get Breaking. In? No, before, after that. <laughs> after that. That's a good one. Step Up. Uh, one of those, yeah, Step Ups or whatever it is. They go to competitions and go against other uh, groups and They're stuff like break that. Break dancers. Uh, yeah. Pop a lockin. <laughs> no shit. So, so like Jason Mendoza. Um, yes. So, so yeah, I thought it was a great choice for uh, uh, for the Descendants role since he has some experience in dancing and all that. But as uh, far as we've been we uh, been told in the media and press is that he had a uh, seizure at night and died from that. And uh, the reports uh, saying apparently that, he had a history of uh, medical. Yeah, issues. no one's saying what, which makes leads me to believe that it was actually some drug related thing, and that's just the information. But no, I'm not saying I know that's true. That's just no. They literally said that he had a seizure from an ongoing medical condition for which he was being treated. That's the exact quote. Apparently, real fast, he was set to appear as a series regular in HBO's new show, Mrs. Fletcher. Oh, and a spinoff of the film American Satan called Paradise City, mm. a TV spinoff about rock stars navigating the music industry. American Satan is. Uh, I watched that movie. Apparently, it was he was supposed to be in a spinoff of that movie. Huh. Uh, a lot of uh, his uh, co-stars and, of course, uh, close friends, you know, tweet out a lot of things. Uh, I'm just going to read one of them. It's from uh, Adam Sandler, who said, Too young, too sweet, too funny. Just the nicest, most talented, and most decent kid around. Love that kid. Cares so much about his family. Cares so much about the world. 
Thank you, Cameron, for all you gave to us. So much more on the way. All our hearts are broken. Thinking of your amazing family and sending our deepest condolences. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, move on with the rest of the podcast. And um, I don't know if you guys felt it, but there was like an earthquake, like on uh, well Friday, and it, it like it it like shook everything around. <laughs> Whoa, really? Yes, it was. Uh, first of all, let me just say that I was nowhere near it. I was actually in, in L.A. <laughs> And I was at the well, dodge. Uh, well, hold on. We got to back up. We got to back up? Back it up. Back it up. Because, I mean, as far as Disney goes, there was actually a first earthquake. Just because you didn't feel it doesn't mean it isn't newsworthy. Hey, the, the way I say if I didn't feel it, it didn't happen. Well, it affected Disneyland. <laughs> I agree. We had affected Disneyland. And as far as this podcast goes, uh, it matters. Uh, because uh, first there was a podcast. At, or, uh, <laughs> 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 yes, first there was a podcast at 1030 in the morning. Now, first, there was a earthquake the day before at 1030 in the morning, which uh, shook Disneyland as well. Uh, we're not going to get into the whole details of where it was. It was just, let's say, just say they were all far enough away where, uh, thank goodness, there was no damage. Uh, but as usual, uh, with most things, there was an earthquake that's strong enough to uh, set off safety uh, things and uh, basically cause uh, Disneyland to have to go into... Uh, Safety measures, which uh, requires them to shut down all the rides and conduct safety inspections, uh, which then now fast forwarding to uh, that happened at 1030 in the morning, which I'm sure isn't as bad in the morning because, uh, I mean, it is bad because you have people who are just getting in line. uh, So you have a lot of people that were being forced to wait because of that. Uh, But then at the same time, uh, the one the next evening, which was like, what, at seven something? Something like you that. were already yeah, at the yeah, game, so yeah. it definitely had to have been past uh, seven. Uh, and uh, that one, which of course uh, started out seven point one, was down to six point nine, then was up back up to a seven point one, uh, was pretty hefty. Uh, everybody felt that one. It was rocking and a rolling. Uh, definitely uh, doing all those kind of things, and then once again uh, felt in Disneyland very heavily. Once again. Uh, what about seventy five percent of the rides were shut down uh, yes. to conduct safety inspections, to which of course led to uh, you know our favorite thing, stupid guests uh, <laughs> complaining about how the rides were being shut down. To oh, be and uh, don't safety for- inspections. don't forget they want refunds. Oh, did they? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, especially on the well, tell one, God, the tell one, them to tell their God that they want refunds. Well, I don't think it has anything to do with God. I think it's Mother Nature it's more. You know, oh sure now now whoa, 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 now whoa. their god has whoa. nothing guys, to do with it. I'm just saying you're telling what, me that's not the same thing. No, it's not. <laughs> no, the day before the one that had the no that happened the day before, I saw a lot of people uh, complaining and people asking for refunds, and they were getting mad because Disney said uh, they weren't going to get any type of refunds. Now, if they had if they if it was like the middle of the afternoon, right, or early, and then they people had just arrived. And everything was going to be shut down the whole day. I could see Disney saying, okay, if you want to come to the front, you know, let everybody know. If you want to go to the front, leave, give us your ticket, and we'll replace it with a voucher for another day or something. That would make sense. But not if the the things are just shut down for an hour. The only way that would happen is if there was, like, if the earthquake had been closer and there had actually been damage. Right. Or if there was a need or if there was some definitely huge safety concern. The, the in the park or something like that. Uh, you know, I mean, it's not like a fight broke out or anything. Generally, oh these, wait, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> generally, these uh, earthquake inspections, like within an hour, everything's up and running. Well, yeah, I mean, they just have to send somebody who's qualified to walk through the ride and make sure, especially stuff like uh, Space Mountain, right. any of the roller coasters. You have to make sure that no cracks. Happened. I mean, I'm sure there's certain stress points they look for and stuff. Like, like if I said, it's there, I'm it's sure gonna be they there have first. somebody that, unlike security, I'm sure they actually have somebody who's trained to do their job, uh, looking at all these things to make sure that everything's safe. And then once they give the okay, then they just uh, open the ride back up. I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't it any more of a big deal than that time the lights went out, and yet people still wanted refunds then too. Remember when the power went out? Yeah. It's basically the same thing. They both caused, uh, you know, rides to shut down. They both have to be inspected. That's how it goes. How do they keep things dry under the dome? I don't know. Now, people don't understand that uh, it will take time to inspect the rides. There's not like a ride inspector at every single ride. 
they have to go through, you know, one ride to the next. And I know. I'm sure they have several people on property. Like, you know, the fire yeah, department can do some of the smaller like, ones. Dude, haven't you played Roller Coaster is... Tycoon? I have. <laughs> 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 roller Coaster. <laughs> Are you a tycoon? Yes. Nice. Oh, nice park. So, yeah, I mean, people don't understand that. I get the point that, hey, you know what? They don't have one person at each ride at one time who can inspect. They have to wait for them to get there and check everything. And you get to name your time. theme park in that game, right? Okay, is, yours called, is yours called Diggy Land? It's called Digsy Land. Digsy Land. Yeah. I figured it was something like that. I didn't give it the name. It was, oh. I think it was Kevin Connor. So, yeah, people complain about everything, but, you know, hey, that's the way it goes. That's how people are. They just want, you know, something for nothing. And their chicks for free. Oh. <laughs> hey, so you know what wasn't handled efficiently, according to uh, most of our opinions? <laughs> and those of us that, uh, those people that think it was handled efficiently, well, you're just wrong. Yes. And you know nothing about theme parks. So, yeah, uh, if you haven't heard by now about the fight <laughs> in Toontown, well, then probably... You're, you're not online. <laughs> you're not online, or you've been living under a rock, because, I mean, even... Well, I mean, even uh, randoms that don't go to Disneyland much. Have been, right. Well, I've I mean, seen even, this one. even Tim knows about it. <laughs> the end of this la- past week, uh, there was a uh, altercation in uh, Toontown involving uh, apparently all members of the same family, because yeah. that's how loving this, their family is, <laughs> uh, that they just want to fight each other. Uh, I don't know what it I- was about, something to do with. Some and I don't know, but uh, yeah, uh, basically the uh, the um, the big takeaway. Well, no, uh, number one, uh, this is like super bad publicity for Disneyland. Uh, on top of everything that's going on with the uh, park not being crowded, I guess. Uh, then they get this. This is really. Uh, but uh, I think the main thing, the main thing to talk about here is, uh, well, you know, one of our favorite subjects. <laughs> Security. Yep. Um, I mean, anybody that I've seen commenting that knows about law enforcement security, how long things take, has basically applauded them for showing up in three minutes. That three minutes is a short amount of time for them to show up. I'm just doing both <laughs> sides here. That's of what I've read from a lot of people. Good well, people on both sides. They should have people in every land. I will say that. However, if they're coming from outside the land, three minutes is is quick. Although a lot can happen in three minutes, uh, from what we've seen. Right. Oh, are you done? Well, I'm. I mean, usually conversations right. go both ways. I don't know. Uh, I just, I just, I 100 percent disagree. I just, uh, you know, those people uh, say that they they just want to have a, you know, just like always. Uh, people always want to, you know, kiss security's ass or just like uh, come to security's defense for some reason. I don't know why people insist on doing that. Uh, security doesn't deserve it 100 uh, percent. There is a female there was guard a, there in the was thing. A complete, you can see her there doing was a nothing. complete breakdown of everything uh, when it came to this. Uh, this um, I'm going to say right now that uh, this is basically the last straw for uh, security for me. I think they've just 100 percent. Just I mean, I've already hated security with a passion for uh, I don't know how many years now, uh, but this is just 100 uh, percent proves to me that they just don't know what the hell they're doing. Uh, that their security are improperly trained. Uh, I would even venture to say that I have received more security training than these people ha- probably have. Uh, Disney needs to start requiring guard cards. That's all there is to it. You have to, if they're, if they're not already requiring guard cards for uh, security at Disneyland, they need to because uh, these people are clearly not, haven't gone through security any kind of security, uh, proper security training. Uh, I mean, I I went I went through guard card training back in uh, like '97. Uh, and then I've also had uh, loss prevention, uh, hands-on loss prevention training. So, and I worked in hands-on loss prevention. I know what it's like to deal with these kind of situations. I mean, you're, you're and, not, uh, regardless they have a guard card or not, they're not supposed to put their hands on anybody. But there's a way to deal with a situation like that by being physical. You know, you have to be imposing, I and mean, you can put your arms out, keep them from walking past you to where they have to assault. You know, where you have to defend your basically. You know, I'm not saying to pro- they, to provoke the person, but that guy in the red shirts running back and forth. I mean, he could have just started socking all sorts of. Yeah, I'm going to get to that in guests. a second. I just want to finish the thought of uh, uh, it's it's clear from this video. I've I never knew for sure whether Disneyland security was hands on or not. Uh, this video either 100 proves that uh, they are not, 
or one hundred percent proves that none of those people uh had the balls to put their money where their mouth is and do something about it. A couple because, of the guests did, but not the security uh, guards. There's no such thing as all completely hands off security. If they are hands off securities, that's because Disney is too cheap to pay the extra insurance required to have hands on security, like uh, you know, like Target back in the day, or uh, you know, you used to see those famous videos of Target security throwing people out and running out and catching uh, shoplifters and throwing them on the ground and stuff. And that's the kind of security that I worked when I worked uh, private security for uh, private LP for uh, Ralph's. But uh, and we were allowed to tackle people and shit. And uh, but uh, I mean, if they were running away from you, were trying to. Uh, like I said, if uh, uh, if Disneyland something. security was, uh, I think it's a total failure, and uh, it one hundred percent handcuffs Disneyland security by the fact that uh, it almost makes them pointless. It all, I mean, Disneyland security. A lot of people, oh, oh, well, they make us feel safe. How? Why? By the fact that. Uh, a fight can go on for four minutes and nobody can do anything about it. The fact that uh, I think the biggest breakdown there is that even after security shows up, the guy who perpetrating all of the instigating is, is hitting, still hitting allowed women. to walk over and, and be a foot away from the woman who he just got done beating on and security still allowed him to walk within a foot of her. That never should have been allowed to happen within uh, 30 seconds of security being on that site. He should have had everybody separated. He should have been backstage. I'll let you go in a second. I just want to finish this thought. He should have been backstage because from the way that camera looks, it looks like they're standing right next to the bathroom. Would you agree? Yeah, they're right next to the restaurant. They're right yeah. but on that corner by the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. Literally over the filmer's shoulder, right shoulder, is the, the, the gates. is the big gate to go backstage. That guy should have been backstage within 30 seconds of security showing up on the scene, but yet he was still allowed to rock. Uh, even after guests or whoever those people were had already got him down on the ground, security shows up and just let him, lets him walk around willy-nilly doing nothing. I just... I just the argument I've heard from the other side is like, what did you expect them to do? Tackle the guy? Yes, I expect Disneyland to pay know, for security to be but if they don't know hands walk, on. But if they don't know walking up what's happened and they haven't seen it, then how do they know what to do? That woman security guard, which I haven't even gotten to yet, well, she, she's she's a problem. Well, yeah. she's a problem. A, she did her observe and report, and she should have immediately reported on the radio what was happening. So that way, as soon as Ernie and all the others showed up that they would know what was happening. So there's no excuse that they didn't know what was happening and what the guy was doing as soon as they walked up, whether it was over the radio or whether it was verbally immediately upon them coming on the scene. She should have been telling people that custodian that was there should have been relaying information. Relaying information. Everybody should have relayed information either before or immediately as soon as secure, so the rest of security showed up on the scene. And that guy should have been backstage within a minute of them being on the scene rather than being allowed to walk around freely. And like I said, get in the face of the woman who he just literally got done dragging around by the hair. Now on uh, Instagram, we have a comment and this uh, from this uh, one of our followers saying, having worked for secure Disney security, I can say even if a big, strong officer uh, were there and went hands on to subdue the aggressor. The Walt Disney Company would fire the security officer mm -hmm. on the spot because that is company policy. Yes, the policy is if you go hands on, you can be, you can and will be terminated. Sad and stupid situation all around. So what do they do then? Well, if they're, they're, if, they're we're, 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 if they're risking getting fired, at what point do they like if they're if this guy's attacking like a guest that they're not with? I mean, are you allowed to grab them and pull them off, or you, you just have literally to. have to? At that point, you can't just be like, "Oh, I'm just doing a work." This guy's saying he'll be fired, so I'd it's like his be... risking his job. Well, or do you help? I mean, that's that's. Uh, I mean, yeah, you just have to look at the. Uh, I, don't I mean, know. are you? Is it? Is the person doing something bad enough that you're willing to risk your job? Because that's the question these guys have to ask themselves. It's literally their job, though. I mean, that's their job is to protect the guests. You think a guy like Ernie that's been there for 35 years or something is going to I think like... Ernie should be the first one to do it because he was a goddamn Marine. And he, he should well, know better. And he knows how. But again, he's risking his job. But then again, the point, are, what I saw is, who did Ernie go up to first? A woman. Yeah, exactly. That was, he that went really, up to a woman. Yeah, that he was, didn't go up to the guy. He went up to a woman. Ernie's not going to do anything with that situation. He's not going to defuse nothing. That's what I'm saying. It's I don't think any of these guys are going to do 
I mean, unless, especially if they got people standing around with cameras. Well, I mean, the point is, is that guy saying that if that if they put their hands on anybody, that they're going to be fired. That, like I said, that just one hundred percent proves that Disneyland is a hands off company. Which, like I said, I've I've wondered for years whether they were hands off, and now I know one hundred percent that Disney is too cheap to pay the insurance required to be a hands on security company. And once again, like I said, they need to re- reevaluate or. Uh, well, I don't know. Probably not, since they have so-called "quote-unquote" security experts who know nothing about theme park security, but uh, they seem to want to th- blow their mouths off talking about how they agree with how Disneyland handled everything. So, I mean, everything's about safety. Do you really think that uh, allowing that that fr- fracas to go on for four minutes was in the best interests of uh, guest safety? I don't think so, especially with how much space that whole thing took up. Now, I want to um, go what happened afterwards. Uh, of course, the family, all the members of the family did not cooperate with the police, and they let them all go. The guy who's, who was beating up all the women and, and throwing punches, he should have been locked up. But I think that the fact that he didn't get locked up is Disney's fault. The reason is because when you have a situation like that, and you finally get Disney personnel, cast members on the scene. The first thing they want to do is get the situation backstage. They want to clear everybody, all the guests away, and don't because they don't want the guests to be seeing this, even though they've seen it for four minutes. Then what happens is that you don't get a guest saying, "Well, this is what I saw. This is what I saw. This is what I saw." If you had all all the guests saying, "This guy was hitting this woman and this woman and this woman." Then he would be locked up and he would be in jail no matter what, no matter if the family members cooperate or not. And the other guy in the white shirt was hit, uh, white shirt or black shirt, the shorter one that he was fighting with in the beginning. He hit a woman too. He hit, like, I, I think out of retaliation, he was like, Oh, I can't reach you. I'm going to hit your girlfriend. But then. my point is, if they would have let the gas say, This is what I saw to the police, yeah. they would have been all locked up. Well, there's, and that's the result, though, is that the police, once they realized or found out that there was a video, now the police have the video and they're going to seek out these people because I think just they saying, got their info. They just should have let guests saying, hey, you know, this is what I saw. Well, you're completely right in saying that that was uh, probably 100% Disneyland's fault right, because right. Uh, security should have been the one getting statements from uh, guests who were uh, particularly, they should have said, oh, look, I see a guy over there filming. Let me go get his statement. Get these people's statement. Well, Dan the Mailman's joined us. Finally. We caught him up. Yeah. Wasn't hard. So what's your thoughts? Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I know firsthand from, again, somebody who works there, that there were plainclothes security in the video. That they're there. People that were recognizing, like, oh, I know who that is. There's people in there. That are, from the beginning, or did they show from, up with Ernie and everybody else? From the beginning. See, so who were there? Plain clothes. Who again? See, are, are I've instructed been w- not supposed to touch anybody. I've been wondering if there were plain clothes there, there from the beginning, yes. and I wondered why they didn't do anything. Right, because I understand that they're undercover, and they but, can't blow that cover because they work other see, places that's under, bullshit. undercover. Blow too. Their they cover. do loss prevention. Yeah. And they all they blow their stuff. cover. My out. You know, they've done they that with me. Fuck their cover. They, because they've done that with me. They came up to me, says so, I'm uh, security, and blah 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 blah. I'm, so I mean. Yeah, what were you filming it? Whatever, because it was very obvious that that was being filmed. Something right, like that like you know. I, I'm gonna, I'm thoughts. gonna, I'm, you know what? Uh, screw their cover because I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to the point that I was gonna get to eventually, and that's that. Uh, like I said, as someone who has actually been through guard card training and who has been through uh, loss prevention and security training myself. Uh, n- yes, everybody lo- uh, observe and report, observe and report. But right. you know what else? Uh, as Disneyland security, one of their biggest jobs should should be is diffusing and creating barriers. And everybody's like, well, they were creating barriers between the regular guests. No, they weren't. Because no, they regular weren't. guests were getting yeah. into it because See, now what I- security was doing nothing. Hold on. Uh, the thing is that what security, even if you know the plain clothes security and the 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 white woman who stood around there doing nothing, literally observing and reporting. Probably, maybe not even reporting. She was definitely observing, but she wasn't doing <laughs> the cast. She wasn't doing jack shit. Yeah, there was no, a security the white, the cast woman, member in the white woman security. Oh, okay, yeah, I did. Who didn't do showed up probably about yeah. a minute or forty five seconds in. Her, the the uh, the undercover, the 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 custodian, anybody. 
who was there should have done as best they could to try and get guests. The See, custodian were, was. I, custodian I had, was putting himself in yeah, between. Yeah, the guest, the I had custodian if, was literally the only person there who was doing what he should have been doing. I have wondered if one of the one of the people who had just gotten involved in trying to separate was one of the plainclothes. Just to be like, oh, back up, back up, come on now, you know, because you're not really doing anything. You're really acting like uh, a plainclothes, just a, a somebody, but I can't get that confirmed because the person who told me that there was plainclothes there obviously didn't want to disclose that because they know who the person is. Right. So it was like, okay, no, that's fine. I understand that. No, I know that. Not, no, I know me yeah. as a person. I would have been one of the ones that stepped in and be like, hey, man, come on. Got to calm down. Like, it's okay. Whatever's going on. Let's just, let's just diffuse the situation. This isn't, we're not here. No one's here for yeah. this. Just try to settle down. You would have been, been a teacher. Right. <laughs> but I, I know guys, too, that would have choked him out. Like that dude did. That like yeah. that one. Well, all that he dude let was, him go was grab him. Quick. Uh, I know guys that would not have done that. They would have. Who they would have held him there in a because I know plenty of guys who do um, jujitsu who would have been there and held him in a chokehold until police actually like, got there or lights out. Yeah, or whatever. like yeah. you either are going to be here and chill or I'm going to snap your neck. Yeah, one of the two. Because I mean, the biggest thing is that I think that uh, every cast member's number one priority. And uh, not only, like I said, not only have I been through security training, obviously I worked at Disneyland too, so I know what the hell that's about. Uh, every cast member's number one priority should be Disney, sa- Disney cast safety. Well, that's what Disney told me in a tweet. And uh, Which is what? That everything was about that number one. Yeah. didn't happen because uh, not, only was the get- the, well, not only did that fight escalate about four times over four minutes... Or actually, only three minutes because the fighting was only over probably three minutes. Yeah. Uh, not only did that fight escalate about three or four times, uh, when if people would have stepped in from the very get go, it would have been escalated before he ever hit the second woman. It could have been de-escalated by get by uh by the uh, the Boom. undercovers. The gods have been angry by the other security. By anybody who possibly getting in between the guests, getting in between that guy and the other people he's going after. Like I said, as soon as security showed up, he should have been backstage within 30 seconds. Yeah. Because backstage was literally right there. It, it is. It's, it's, the, it's the doors. Literally right, right over we, the... We've talked about those doors. Tim's yeah. talked about those like, doors Literally the right over the shoulder of the guy who was filming yeah. was the, is the doors to backstage. It, it would have taken them 30 seconds if they had gone backstage. He never should have been allowed to, like I said, I'm going to say this over and over again because this is the the biggest breakdown for me is the end because he should never have been allowed to walk back up to the woman who he just got done dragging around by the hair. Right. He should not, should never have happened. He did it right in front of Ernie. He did it right in front of several uh, plain clothes, one of which I assume was a supervisor, another security guard, yeah, that had their, several uh, employees. Badge on their belt only. So, I mean, that never should have happened. I don't care what any so-called security expert says. I don't care if they're former law enforcement. They don't know anything about theme park security. That guy should never have been allowed to go up to that woman at the end after he's already been beating on her and after he's already attacked two or three people. It never should have happened. He should have been backstage by that point. Just anybody cool that says so else. just doesn't care about safety or they just don't know or they just are that freaking stupid. Now, um... We all heard about this, of course, through the social medias, and it, it, I was, it was actually on ABC News, which it I was, was on really... Well, well oh, ABC News, yeah. though. Yeah. I was really surprised that Disney it was owned. on ABC News. Like, uh, I just want to say that uh, Disney has been surprisingly acknowledge- acknowledging... <laughs> they have to. Uh, you not take only, too much heat not to. Uh, not only because of uh, you know uh, them not uh, trying to block the video from being shown which obviously they did at the beginning because uh, Michael had it removed by somebody. Well, they they uh, removed him from Facebook, and then today I heard they were has been uh, removed from YouTube. I have a copy. The, Can I the, send it to you? No, video? no, I mean, I have another, like, we, uh, Brittany did, like, a screen record just so we, in case it was all removed. Why would you need to do that? He sent one in text message. Oh, I thought that was, like, a link thing. No, it was an to, actual video. I oh, saved it. Never, okay. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, the, they sent out that tweet and they sent out, well, it was on, uh, Disneyland Resort sent out that, or was Parks Blog. Right? No, it was Disneyland violence, Resort. Blah, blah, blah. Disneyland Today. I oh, it was Disneyland Today. One Disneyland Today on Twitter and Facebook and stuff, uh, sent out a, uh, basically a, whatever it was, acknowledgement of. Yeah. Yeah. 
basically acknowledging what happened. Uh, which Wait, was surprising, hold, too. Hold on. So which is surprising. They, they, Disney's pulled this from social media? Is that what, is that that they what tried in the beginning, I think. Well, I know they took him down from Facebook. Because uh, Michael had it posted uh, that on the weekend, and he, he had, his was removed. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. Well, have they all been now just news reports? Yeah. I haven't paid attention to well, that. Once it hits the news, there's like literally no there's stopping nothing they it. can do. Oh yeah, that's well. I'm looking at it right they here. They were probably hoping that they would take them all down before the news got a hold of it, but yeah, no such luck. I just want to say that as much as I would like okay. that uh, this is actually going to mean anything, we all know it's not. Uh, Disneyland doesn't care. You guys were talking about the plain uh, clothes security. You know, any any cast member lead with a radio can radio for plain clothes to like basically follow somebody that they hey, deem okay, let's, suspicious. Let's, let's talk about that for just a second. Sure, yeah. Okay, so the custodian, do they have radios? Uh, not most leads of them. Leads do. Only the, Only yeah, the leads? The, yeah, the leads are okay. managers. Okay. So what? The, and the CM, definitely. Nothing, right? Well, you know here you talked about there was plain clothes already there. But yeah. They did, but, you know, that you're the first person to acknowledge that, that you know, because you maybe know somebody. But, yeah. Uh, it makes sense if this family was that loud and boisterous and arguing from the front gate on their way in and throughout their day, it makes sense that some cast member at some point would have, especially if they're dropping cuss words and you know, their F bombs and stuff. A lot of good cast- dead, though, if that happened, well, it, it didn't do any good. I'm just saying that Disney was aware and it makes it almost worse. It makes it worse because if they were somebody, aware of it. If cast members said, Oh, these are you know, radio security. That's like them We've knowing got these people over was... here. They're not a problem now, but I think they could become a problem. They're really loud and you know, whatever. They're then the security comes, they find them and they just start trailing them. And that's what these plain clothes guys just basically trail on them so that they can respond faster in the case that they become an issue. I just it didn't do any good and they didn't they didn't show up quick enough or as fast as they probably should have only based on yes 3 minutes is quick for a response time for any sort of law enforcement security anything however if you've already got somebody following them they should have had more officers or more uh security guards around if they think they're if they think they're going to be a problem like I said that does a lot that doesn't do any good if they knew that they, if they knew it I mean uh that's just as bad. That's like, uh, oh, we, that's like n- knowing somebody has a gun and then they still end up using the gun. It's like, what's the point? Which brings me back to my point. I think Disneyland Secure seriously needs uh, to st- uh, reevaluate their relationship, not only with their own security, but also with Anaheim PD. Uh, they, need, they need to either uh, figure out a way to get an Anaheim PD presence closer inside the park or... They need to get their uh, pay, the money, and get their security uh, totally hands-on so they don't have to depend on NIMPD uh, because it brings me back to my point. What happens if you have somebody with a gun in the center of the park like that? Just so you guys know, we're making jokes about the booms, but they're uh, lighting off fireworks still here in this area, probably near my house too. You know, what happens if that happens and uh, security who supposedly can't do anything uh, has to wait for Anaheim PD to come all the way from somewhere outside the park. Well, you know how many people are already going to be dead at that point? Well, you know. What happened in the good old days? You just beat somebody's ass and toss them out. Uh, Dude, back in the day... You the know security... what confuses me about all this whole thing is the story supposedly about the guy who took the gun in uh, two years ago and took the gun in and got it onto uh, 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 Tower of Terror or Guardians or whatever it was at the time. And then he came back out of DCA and got tackled in the in the uh, Esplanade. Uh, you know, a lot of good it would have done for if he had decided to start shooting inside of DCA instead of waiting. Well, how did they know he even had it? I don't remember how they knew he had it. Oh, because some uh, cast member, I think, inside DCA saw him with it mm. and uh, notified security, who then notified uh, Anaheim PD, who I believe was waiting in the Esplanade for him. Uh, and then tackled him. But what would have happened in between the uh, DC and while he was inside DCA, there was nothing they could do. Anaheim PD can't follow him around. Security can follow him around all he wants. But if he pulls out the gun, there's uh, what are they going to do then? Are they going to then risk their lo- jobs to tackle the guy? Is uh, what's what? Where do you decide the line to risk your job for guest safety? Is it a gun or is it just somebody who's going to get punched in the face? Where, where's that line they're going to draw? That's why I said they need to really reestablish. Or reevaluate 
their relationship with their own security and uh, how they want to have their relationship with NIMPD because uh, this was a complete breakdown. Uh, people talk about how fast the response was. No, it wasn't. It was like a freaking snail crawl response, especially considering how close they were to backstage. It's not like this was in fantasy land or, uh, sun- or frontier land where it's like a long way from backstage. They're literally like within like uh, a minute's walk from TDA, which has lots of security uh, at TDA that hang around at TDA. So there's no reason why. Like it- they're on shift hanging outside or? I'm, at, I'm asking because I don't know. At TDA, at yeah. the Team Disney well, building. Well, I'm asking what would be their purpose there. There's always security there. Oh. There's security at the checkpoint. Like they're checking people There's going in and out. There's always security walking around. Uh, they have a station over there. Yeah, but do you think that the people that are, the security guards that are doing the checkpoints are trained in the same way that the security? It doesn't matter. There's security. They should still be able to respond to that. And there's no, it's no excuse either way. Like I said, there's no excuse for it taking as long as it did for uh, security to show up. And I don't care. Security should have been literally running through the park to get there. I mean, anybody who thinks otherwise is just stupid and just obviously just wants to defend his own security for whatever reason. Oh, no, I'm just asking questions. Oh, no, I wasn't referring to you. I was just saying in general because there, <laughs> sure there are people out there supposedly defending Disneyland security, and I don't know why. It's just it's ridiculous. It's just... Yeah. I just want to say that the uh, the only real experience I have with this sort of thing I know of is, uh, uh, and I know you don't like me using a Universal as an example, but Universal does has it has proven beyond a shadow of doubt in the last 20 years that it is one thing that Universal has always done better than Disney is security. Uh, in Back in 98, uh, uh, for Halloween Horror Nights, uh, Universal uh, made the... Um, the uh, mistake that they did rec- rectify two two weeks later of uh, they thought it'd be a good idea to sell uh, everybody here still knows what a bone is when it, in relation to uh drinks I <laughs> alcoholic don't drinks don't. Okay. you know the big tall uh it looks oh. like a bone oh, okay okay it's uh, uh, probably like uh, what about a foot and a half call them, it's tall a, it's a yard yeah the yard in they Vegas, used to call, they call them, them yards they used to call them bones as okay. well because it okay. looks like a bone uh, but yeah a, a yard basically uh, Disneyland thought it was, or uh, Universal thought it was a good idea to sell those at Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, yeah, it wasn't a good super idea. Super weak. <laughs> oh, of alcohol? Yeah. You just the collector cup. Oh, that's no, no, a bad no, no, idea. No, 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 alcohol. That's a, that's a, oh, that's filled, a very bad idea. Filled with alcohol. Yeah, no, no, no. No, it was an extremely bad idea. Uh, and the second night of Halloween Horror Nights that year, uh, there was a humongous brawl. Oh, of course. Uh, at the entrance to Jurassic Park. Yeah. Uh, but you want to know what happened there? There was more people involved, but that fight was broken up within a minute and a half of it starting, uh, because this was even 20 years ago, uh, Universal Security was way better than Disneyland Security is now. And uh, as far as I know, Universal has never had any kind of incidents like that inside their park, uh, because their security actually knows what they're doing. Hey, so none of that shit. Exactly. Uh, you know what? Well, You're fantastic. I try. You know, uh, we've been talking about uh, filler <laughs> and, uh, you know, how things are being brought in just as uh, basically filler because uh, there's obviously not enough. They moved things out of Disneyland because they thought they needed Disneyland cleared because it'd be so crowded because of Galaxy's Edge. Mm-hmm. Well, now they're bringing, needing to bring things back to Disneyland because... Uh, or Hoping people will show up. They're bringing things back and they're uh, making things... Uh, Cheaper. I don't know how you could say this. Uh, Mickey, it wasn't called Mickey and Friends Bantastic or Cavalcade. Uh, uh, Mickey and Friends Bantastic Cavalcade. That's a hell of a mouthful. Uh, basically, if you've been to Disneyland the last couple of years on uh, their birthday, uh, they do up a little procession with all the characters and stuff, right? Basically, what it yeah. is. Is the band usually involved in that too, or is. Is that the only addition? To I think it's only in certain parts. Depends where. I don't think the band's in there. I am on there. The band wasn't part of Mickey's um, 90th last year. I don't remember. They stopped at the castle and did something. Well, I'm talking about Disneyland's birthday. We, we didn't see that, but, but yeah. they stopped at the castle and they, they have certain spots that I think the band got involved. I don't. I don't. I don't remember. Anyways, uh, basically, what they're doing is uh, the day after Disneyland's birthday, July 18th, which is a Thursday, Ooh. because you know. 
Uh, let's start something on a Thursday. Which is technically the the open to the public day for the birthday. We always say July 17th, but technically that was media day and there was all these fake tickets. So that's oh, why they right, celebrated. Yes. The 18th was technically the first day it was supposed to be open to the public. Technically, yes. Uh, so starting July 18th uh, through August 1st, which just happens to be the day before the electrical parade comes back. Uh, so therein lies the filler of Mickey and Friends' fantastic cavalcade, uh, which will be run twice a day and will basically just be the band and characters parading down the street. So this down is just like an upgraded version of what they already do every day in the morning more so. They Twice already, a day. But they already do the band comes down Main Street. But only once, though. Doesn't yeah. the band only go once, though? And I think the characters they do it, get involved in that, too. They though. do it once in the morning. Yeah, yeah, and there are some characters. They do it once in the morning, and then mm-hmm. they do it once before the flag retreat, right? That's just uh, go, uh, in front of uh, the train station. Yeah, that's yeah, just... Yeah, but they walk, from the, they walk down from like, the, from, like, the first aid part of the yes. of Main Street yeah. up near the hub, and they walk down to yeah. Town Square, yeah. yeah. And when you walk the whole way, it's called a parade. <laughs> so the Bantastic is going to be a full It's all the logistics parade. of it, Tim. No, it's a cavalcade. It's a it's cavalcade. cavalcade. Oh, yeah, not a parade. It's a cavalcade. Yeah. It's a Bantastic cavalcade. So they're going to bring out maybe they'll have like what two floats and a bunch of characters and. Well, the cavalcade for Mickey's ninetieth was just the vehicle. Yeah, the vehicles. Yeah, that's all it was. It's kind of like a raining day parade, you know, when it rains and they just go on the, the bus. It's we a, don't even know if this is going to have vehicles. So, I so mean, this it's is not like even that. Potentially a whole lot of nothing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not potentially. I mean, basically it is. is basically, it, but, as but are I we going to check it out to check it out? Of yeah. course. Uh, <laughs> One of us I, at least will. <laughs> as I said, that it's basically just filler, and the only reason we're talking to, about it is because... Uh, well, it's on our list. It's on the list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but with that being said, we can move on to... Uh, the rest of the list. Halloween, I assume? No, spooky, spooky time. Halloween, because, you know, uh, Disneyland, the, only, the best way for Disneyland to make people forget about uh, the fight in Toontown is to talk about <laughs> Halloween. Uh, we got two different uh, posts about Halloween this week. Uh, w- number one is them telling us what we probably already knew and that we, they kind of hinted at and that we're going to be getting a lot of overlays on Cars Land rides. Oh, that's cool. Uh, We've been getting the hint for a couple years. They've been kind of talking about um, rumors that there was going to be a uh, overlay for uh, racers. Well, they did. They when was it? Last year or the year before? They started decorating Cars Land in general for Halloween. Seven, sixteen or seventeen. So seventeen, I I think. think Yeah. So. Uh, but they started with that, but now you're talking about an actual overlay on the attraction. Right, but we're not getting the overlay. Uh, it doesn't look like we're getting the overlay on racers, which is what I thought hmm. uh, we were originally going to get. But there will be an overlay on the Mater's other. Junkyard Jamboree, and which is going to turn into Mater's Graveyard Jamboree, which I believe they already did. I'm yes. sorry, that is literally the most fun ride in, this, in DCA. Uh, and then uh, Luigi's Rollick and Ro- Roadsters becoming Luigi's Honkin' Halloween, which I believe they also did last year. You know, I've never been on that uh, one, but I think I'll ride it for Halloween. So neither of those is particularly new. I don't even... Uh, is any of this stuff new information? Or no. Or just telling us things that we didn't know, but we knew from last year? Monsters After Dark is coming back, of course, to Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Which I've never ridden. It's I've never what? actually ridden you it. You know what? I still haven't either. <laughs> uh Hey, so uh, while they're just reminding us of a bunch of stuff uh, that we're going to get at DCA that we figured we would because it was there last year, uh, we're getting, we got an announcement of something that we never expected to get at Disneyland. But once again... Good food? Filler. Is that fireworks? Yes. Well, I thought I mentioned that we said that there's a possibility of... They're well, yeah, we had that. talked about that uh, it would make sense right. because of uh, them still having fireworks... Uh, it mentions that uh, the fireworks uh, have not been there in, what, 10 years? So I assume that means that originally the fireworks were available for all the guests to see. Yes, at before the point, party. Yeah. Before the party started. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so uh, Halloween Screams, the fireworks show that would usually be on during Mickey's Halloween Party over at Disneyland, will be showing during Disneyland uh, regular operating hours in the evenings. 
during Halloween time. Uh, one other note, we did get the, uh, besides that, we did get the official dates of when Halloween time is. And once again, Halloween time has been pushed back to basically as far back as we can get it now. Back or early? <laughs> well, early. I mean, yeah. you know. Uh, it's starting early. Uh, basically, whereas you used to have two weeks in between the end of summer and beginning of uh, Halloween, and then last year there was only a week. Well, now there's no break. Uh, you basically, summer ends, Halloween begins, the way it should be, it was, the way uh, it always should have been. Right after uh, Labor Day, right? Uh, yes. Right so uh, starting this year, Halloween time will start on September 6th. Which is literally wow. the day after uh, summer ends, which is unprecedented That's as like, far as Disneyland goes. There's never been no break in between. Uh, there's not either. There there's not even time to change a disc. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Traditionally, was been like traditionally it used to be. So? It used to be the the fifteenth or sixteenth. Yeah. Because wasn't that, that one area. year they did it that Friday the thirteenth debacle? Uh, basically, yeah. There used to be at least a two week uh, period in between the ending of summer and the beginning of Halloween. Then last year uh, it started like on the ninth or something, uh, or it was basically two weeks. But this year it's basically like one end. The summer's over, and then Halloween. And some kids are still not in school on September sixth. Like not every district goes back that. Very few, though. I, I know it's not all. It's not very, anymore. Not a lot, it's but... really surprising about how many schools actually go back to school in August now. So yeah, I mean, I remember going most... back to school like it. You know, it's like September third or fourth would be. You know, after Labor Day weekend, you got to go back to school. Y- you did, but I mean, some stuff has changed. It's still like that back yeah, east. Well, I mean, yeah. it's, it's instructional. It's instructional days. That's what you got to hit like these days. But uh, yeah, so it's really days. interesting. Uh, so uh, you, basically, they can't push it back anymore. Or they can't, you know, move it up anymore. Uh, so from this point on, for probably as many years as they want to do it, uh, we're just going to go straight from summer into Halloween. That's what the stores do. So fine with me. Mm-hmm. So I mean, basically, uh, it's basically what they've been doing in Florida, because uh, I believe not so scary Halloween starts like the last week in August, doesn't it? Nowadays or something like that. Maybe. So I mean, uh, and then uh, Halloween Horror Nights has been starting at Universal earlier and earlier. Uh, so I mean, it's inevit- inevitable that eventually Halloween's well, listen, if they probably going to break into August here eventually, but we'll see. If they can sell two or three more days of party tickets by moving it up or moving it back, technically, uh, why wouldn't they? Which well, is good I mean, business, the, right? the parties still don't start until midway through the month, but yeah, the party keeps moving back a few days at a time. Uh, just as the price keeps going up, uh, you know, outrageously to the now one hundred and fifty dollars almost, basically, uh, if you want to go around Halloween, which is to me is outrageous and dirty. ridiculous and very dirty. But uh, yeah, so fireworks, we get the fireworks. Uh, if anybody thought that uh, they were going to miss out on their uh, Halloween screams, well, you still get it. Okay. Well, and we're still going to get the giant Mickey Jack Lantern and. All of the usual decorations that we always got. So they're just going to play those fireworks as the general fireworks? Yes. The whole way no, through? No, no, oh. no, 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 no. Oh. All right. Like yeah, they're doing the Mickey's Mix Magic thing. Okay. So yeah. they're going to do the projection show during certain nights, and then on probably weekends, you'll get the fireworks with the projections. With, oh, right. So cool. it's, it's not the Halloween Scream show. It is, but yes. with projections only. And then something like night, you'll have fireworks uh, with it. Gotcha. I mean, my opinion, that's the best show they do. So, in other words, the weekend. Right, for right now, at least. The Halloween show's always been my favorite. So, it's cool that we'll get to see it without buying a ticket to a party. Because that's the only time. The only other time you could see that show was either by buying a ticket to the party or going the day after it was too too windy or rained out. That's what I did. And then... If you if you knew that they canceled the fireworks the night before, you definitely wanted to be there the next day because you got to watch them for free without buying a party ticket. Well, unless That's you right. had to pass whatever ten years ago when they were showing it without the party. Oh, well, before the party. Again, I'm. I mean, before that, yeah. But. uh yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it's cool that they're going that mixed magic route, that they're going to have the full show basically probably on the weekends and then during the week uh, just have the projections. I have no problem with that. I think the show is great without the fireworks, with or without the fireworks. So uh, the fact that they've added the projections have made all the shows that much better anyway. Yeah, but I'm going to so. see it both ways anyway. Just why not? Because why not? Because well, no, it'll be there for always, eight weeks or something, right? <laughs> Six weeks, Never seven weeks. hurts to go both ways. <laughs> Hey, so speaking of uh, scary, oh. <laughs> scary, 
uh, Forky. Oh. Everybody's favorite trash. <laughs> That's the best thing about him. Uh, ba, 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 Disneyland ba, ba, ba. Uh, or Disney or whoever Disney's manufacturers are uh, decided to go a little bit too literal with uh, the uh, their 11-inch uh, Forky plush. Because uh, doesn't in the movie his eye fall actually fall off yes. in the movie? Yeah. Uh, so they decided to go a little bit too literal with their 11-inch plush. And uh, apparently, they, it's subject to the eye fault. The one, one or one or both, is it one or both or what, one? What did you hear? Just one? Yeah. The big what? eye or the so, small oh, well, eye? Actually, hold on. That's the one I bought Matthew. He has that one. The day that we went is the day that I bought it when we went to look at the statue. <laughs> is it the big one or the it's small the, one? It's the eleven inch one. The no, exact no, no, no. One the eye is it the it's big the eye small or the small eye. So supposedly the the bigger eye uh-huh. is stitched on, oh. and the smaller eye just is just glued on. Okay. If, so if you know anything about crafts at all? Google eyes, Google eyes. They yeah. don't stick to anything. No, no. Uh, so, anyways, the it's eleven inch small. Uh, Forky plush uh, has been recalled. voluntarily recalled. Nope. Due to I'm the to due to the uh, little eye falling off, because as I said, they decided to get a little too realistic with it. Uh, but you know, being that it's a that uh, you know children like to eat things <laughs> and pets like to eat things, uh, it's obviously a uh, "Quote unquote defect." When I saw this uh, picture, I thought that the choking hazard was due to the arms, like no, they could have uh, the like eyes. inhaled or something on the on the arm because it looks literally like a pipe cleaner, or what do they call it right now in crafting circles? Yeah, it's pipe cleaner. What? Is, but what? Is, there's a new it's name for it. Oh, I don't know. Elizabeth, could I, tell I'm me. not a crafter. I just happen to know that. About Apparently, there's that. another name for it in crafting. I already does a lot of uh, scrapbooking. Yeah, I oh. do. Yeah. <laughs> Cry cut. No? Cricket? What is it? I don't know. I don't know uh, so anyways, you could, uh, if you have one of those large 11-inch uh, Forkies, I will include the picture of it, uh, uh, unless Dan has a better picture of his that he could send me. Oh, yeah, I can, uh, I can actually take it. Rather that, than me it. using the stock photo that they have here. No, I'll take one. Uh, the take, me a, take a pic- better picture and send it to me. Uh, if you have one of those 11-inch plush, por- plush. Uh, if you have one of those 11-inch Plus four keys that are from the park, uh, and you are uncomfortable with the possibility of its eye falling off, uh, you may return it to the uh, parks, any parks, any North American Disney Disney Park store for a full refund, or you can call 866-537-7649. And, but why would you return uh, it, really? Yeah, I don't know. If you want your kid to still play with it. Well, here, I would just say take the, the eye off and just hear Here's the thing, because I, I, I told Anthony this. My son has that exact one. That's exactly what we bought him. Diggs was there the day I actually um, bought it before we had met up again from where we were. Um, it's not. I'm not taking it back. Yeah, I'm just. I'm not going to take it. Well, back. I mean, how old he, is your? Well, he's ten. He's well, not, not going to eat the eye. Yeah. It specifically then, it's, it specifically cites that it could pose a choking hazard to children under three. The thing is, there's, so, there's nothing to replace it. Oh well, <laughs> they just want to give can, you a refund. And then yeah, I just want to give you a refund, money, but I don't have anything. They're to go not going to compensate you for your time or and, effort in returning in. Uh, the best right, thing to yeah. do would be to wait, or to maybe call the number because well, maybe I was if you call the number, they the, might replace with uh, upgraded ones. I, I thought about that, so I, I may go as far as that. But if you can't give me something to replace, something my kid likes, because my kid, everybody, I, we've said this hundred times, my kid is such a Toy Story fan. Yeah, like I can't, I can't do that to him. I finally today got all the pieces for the McDonald's. Happy Meals. The van. Yeah, he put together the RV today, and the, a couple of days ago, somebody gave me one of the standees from a uh, AMC theater. So, Woody, a four foot tall Woody's cool. standee is in my house. Cool. <laughs> what I would do is I would probably wait, or if I if you're gonna actually call the number, I would ask them if they have any plans to. Uh, well, that's what I heard, but you know how slow it, that's gonna come out. But uh, yeah, I know. I was just wondering. Just if, tell them. Give me. Here's my number. Call me when you have something to replace it with. So, yeah. anyways, if you have a kid under three, or if you uh, really think it's that big of a deal, uh, take it back. If not, then well, it, then leave his eye off, and yeah, honestly, he's yeah. a little bit more accurate to whatever scene that is. He takes his eye off. I'm not too concerned with it because I know he's not gonna eat the eye, and he doesn't staple the damn thing, rough it up enough that it probably would even fall off. But if if they do come out on. Within a few weeks or whatever of a replacement. Staple the antlers on. Are you hungry? Well, they are. It's time for Fat Time in the Parks. All right. So we, we told you guys a while, a while back that the uh, little uh, bar outside of go. Whitewater Snacks that serviced the, bo- uh, the pool had closed and that they were... Uh, basically, like adding on and creating like a whole like pool bar, basically, yeah. uh, where they where people at the pool can get uh, served. 
uh, more directly rather than just having like whatever people bring it out to them or whatever it was they were doing before from Whitewater Snacks. Uh, so Whitewater Snacks had uh, the outside had closed. Uh, and they, it was still open, I think, right? Or it had closed briefly, it closed but for then a little it bit. opened back up. Yeah. Uh, but the outside was still, all, and then they were still working on it. Well, that is all now reopened. Uh, Whitewater Snacks is no more, which makes Ooh. me sad because uh, you know we've talked about Whitewater Snacks on this podcast since the beginning. Uh, it was one of my favorite places to go in and relax. Uh, lots know, of stories from there. I've never actually been there. Really? Well, you no. can't anymore. Uh, you can't go anymore, oh. not as Whitewater Snacks. because it's gone to Yesterland. Because it is now called the GCH Craftsman Bar okay. and Grill. Ooh. The uh, Grill, the Craftsman, the GCH Craftsman Grill is now the name of the former Whitewater Snacks. And then the GCH Craftsman Bar is the part that is by the pool. Ah. Uh, so you can't go to the bar part unless you have a pool pass. Presumably. Most likely. Presumably. I'm going to clarify something. Presumably, for you. that's specifically for uh, hotel guests. I S- assume. Somebody's going to ask you what GCH stands for. Oh, gosh. Uh, Grand good, California Hotel. Good, uh, good chow cooking here. at home. Good chow here. Good, good no, chow so. here, yes. <laughs> good cooking hut. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> that is, I believe, now, all of that is, I believe, now open. I, the uh, as I said, the Whitewater Snacks has now become the GCH Craftsman Grill, uh, and just uh, jokes aside, obviously GCH stands for Grand Californian Hotel. I actually had to think about that for a second. Uh, yeah, and GCH. Well, I had to think about it when I first saw the yeah. post. I was like, "What the hell's GCH? Why are they getting trying to get all fancy?" Yeah, it took me about ten seconds. Uh, the new lounge area. Oh, uh, in response to something Tim said earlier. Uh, Whitewater Snacks will be known as GCH Craftsman Grill and will continue serving its current menu. So everything that Whitewater Snacks was serving as Whitewater Snacks will continue to be served there, including presumably the nachos nope, they, and the hot nope. dogs and all that <laughs> stuff. No, they get rid of it only when you're there. Uh, now, the new lounge area near the pool, as I say, will be called the GCH Craftsman Bar. And that will feature a brand new menu highlighting a wide variety of flavors that will leave your mouth watering. Uh, I have an actual uh, breakdown of some of the food. Break it down. Breaking yo. it down. What just the highlights. Yeah. Just the highlights. Just, just the facts. Just the facts. The, uh, the biggest thing that they seem to be very proud of, uh, because they have it in every single one of the posts about it, is, uh, is a bunch of... Uh, <laughs> burgers or sliders or something okay so there's the uh, as i said on the the post that they've had there's what's called the cali sliders which is an american wagyu patty oven roasted tomato blah 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 and then uh i guess basically all three of them are the you get three of those it looks like i thought they were different burgers but i guess maybe they're all the same uh they have a uh shawarma chicken skewer with arugula salad they have a uh, soy garlic soy glazed chicken wings, black Angus flat iron steak salad. Ooh. They also have a double baked beef nacho. They have a main lobster quesadilla with Monterey Jack and queso fresco. Oh, yeah, that sounds really good. That uh, sounds like a stomach for ache, the uh, for the rabbits, they have a uh, avocado toast, <laughs> and they have a black truffle charred cauliflower grilled cheese sandwich. I bet you would love that without the cauliflower. You might even like it with the cauliflower. Not the cauliflower has much taste. It smells like propane, though. <laughs> uh, well, as long as the rest of it smells like propane accessories. <laughs> uh, they also have pizzas, and then they also have a kids' menu, and then they have a waffle churro sundae and a root beer float for desserts. So, uh,. It says open soon, but I've heard it's already open. I don't know. What have yeah, you guys heard? I did hear that I heard it's open. You guys hear it's already open? Okay. It just says open soon, but I've heard it's already open. So Since it's really just still whitewater snacks. Uh, it does say specifically, as what you said, the pool area will be available only to resort guests and with a designated wristband. Dirty. Uh, so if you want to. Oh, the pool area. Uh, the We're going to go over off the menu, though? We're uh, going to be in the pool area. As far as I know, you got to be in the pool area. Dirty. So Some of that, I think, is doubles of what they have in whitewater, but. You just kind of have to go over there and compare. So, Fat time, little buttons. All right, so, hey, uh, they have some annual pass holder buttons um, that you can get when you mobile order. If they still have them. If they still have them. I don't know if they still have them. Did you get them all, 10? 
which I haven't gotten any buttons yet. I'm going oh, yeah. Thursday. So if you mobile mobile order from uh, Corn Dog Castle Award Wieners, like in uh, Lucky Fortune Cookery, and the Bayside Brews, and get some beer on. Mm, uh, beer. You can get a AP button. So you have to use your mobile ordering. It looks like they're trying to get uh, people to do this more often. Use their mobile ordering. Why do they got to do that? Keep it secret. I know because I mean because. You can uh, go to uh, Clarabelle's and um, what's the other one? Um, Gibson Girl mobile order and yeah. get your AP discount because you don't get your AP discounts there. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I don't eat ice cream, so. <laughs> That's true. I hate so, to sell. I so don't. if you mobile order, and uh, you will get your AP discount on when you do that. So uh, I guess they're just trying to encourage the AP to mobile order more or something. I don't know. But those are the only four places in DCA that you can get your AP button if you mobile order. So uh, I mean, I like mobile ordering. It's for me. It's that's. Cool. Yeah, I, I do it almost exclusively. Yeah, I do too. Unless I have to uh, pay cash. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just a note to anybody who's doing it. I see a lot of comments up on Twitter about people who uh, did the mobile ordering and they were not given a button. So make sure you guys ask for it because yes. uh, otherwise you're pretty much SOL because pretty much the only thing Disneyland. AP's response to that is, we're sorry, and we'll pass along concerns to those uh, related, and basically the, they're not saying that, they're definitely saying there's nothing you can do about it if it's after the fact, so make sure you guys ask for your button. Just, if you know that you are owed the button, make sure you ask for it. You cannot depend on them to give it to you. Damn Disney for making sense. I know, right? Mm. Ridiculous. Hey, I'm going to go tomorrow. Uh, where was that place again? Fortune Cookery. Corn Dog Castle. Corn Dog Castle. Award wieners, award wieners and get your brew on. Yeah, base size or is, is, is there a minimum dollar amount to the order? It says mobile order. So you can order soda, go pick it up and get the button. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I guess at the Except for you. What do they have so that's gonna the bring beer's some... place other than beer? Pretzels. Yeah. Or you can just Sports. look at your Disney app and not ask people. Hey, let's uh, real fast. I just uh, I know he wants to talk about the fuzzy tauntaun, and before he talks about the fuzzy tauntaun, I don't know if you're gonna talk about the foam. Because oh, yeah, apparently we'll a big uh, All right, we'll talk about the foam hula baloo going around about the foam. So mm-hmm. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, well, I went to Oga's Cantina last week, uh, and I'll tell you some more about what I did there later when we get to the email section. Uh, but I ordered a fuzzy tauntaun off several people's recommendations, as you should have. It was really good. I actually liked it. It does have the foam on top. I had heard numerous reports of people saying that the <laughs> foam will make your lips and or tongue numb. And I can confirm this. It's definitely true. <laughs> yeah, it is definitely true. It is some kind of... I had to look it up. I wanted to know what it was. It's some kind of flower that they call the, the toothache flower because it does that. The properties, when it's chewed, make it so it numbs up your thing for dental pain. Huh. So that's what, it, that's what it actually <laughs> is. So I don't know how they get it on top. And it's a little weird because all the foam is on top of the drink. Like you can't... I picked up the glass and was trying to drink the drink, knowing the. I tasted the foam to see if it did what it did, and it did it. And then I was like, "Okay, I want to drink this, but I don't want to get this in my nose because it <laughs> oh, stuck yeah. up. It stuck up. It was a big chunk of foam on the top, and I'm like, how do I kind of just kind of sip it with like my pinky up, trying to get the, the drink out until it was enough to actually get to the whole thing? But yeah, no. Uh, what's in the drink? I don't. The drink had um, something yummy. To look on my new Instagram page, <laughs> uh, the fuzzy tauntaun. Has Ciroc? Is it Ciroc? Ciroc? I don't know. I'm not a vodka. Ciroc. 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 Whatever. It has vodka in it. Peach vodka. uh, Peach schnapps. Simply orange with tangerine, cane sugar, and the buzz foam. And it was dang good. It was good. The other thing I had was whatever comes in the pork mug. That drink was actually pretty good, too. No alcohol in that one. No alcohol in that one. The the Cliff Dweller. That's what it's called. Uh, Citrus juices with coconut. Hibiscus, grenadine, and Seagrant's ginger ale, which was also actually very good. My brother decided to get that because he really wanted the pork mug. Um, so they did that. I actually, you know what? I Because uh, we're talking about that. Um, I had a seat at a table yeah. when I went. Yeah, they actually had, had me seated at a table. You just with, have to ask, basically. No, I just put in my reservation. It was I had a 10.45 p.m. reservation, and I went in. We got in after... Was there like nobody in there? No, it was still pretty packed. Um, by the time we got in there, it took us about 10 minutes to get in. It really wasn't that long. So you but, made, But you made a reservation. I made a reservation. I've heard that you can pretty much just walk up Not now. Not at all, no. man. No. The day that... I went the day before 4th of July. I went to the 3rd. 
it was completely that's completely a holiday packed. week that's it, a it is different. a holiday week we'll, we'll see what it is i actually had talked to michael asking him hey have you had you have to make a reservation because he's posted a couple of different times of him being there and he's like i've had to make a reservation every time i went so we'll see i did have to make one it was pretty busy i left about eleven thirty, and it was still packed there was still the last reservation you can make is at eleven thirty when the park closes at midnight but we sat at a table with about six other people so it was kind of cool because we all started talking. Everybody's talking about the different drinks that they got. So it really was. But Fuzzy Tauntaun and the Cliff Dweller were really good. Um, I went with the Fuzzy Tauntaun over a beer because I figured it was just a beer. Yeah. So I can kind of do that anytime. And there was nothing special about it, especially since it actually gave the name of the, like the brand of it, the brewer, I guess. So I was like, mm, I'll do that next time. I really want to try one of these crazy drinks, So. Yeah, I've heard Thumbs a lot of uh, things about the uh, the foam uh, that are people are like uh, doing weird challenges with the foam, getting no, into their throat you. and trying to make their throats numb no. and weird things. And uh, I'm just like, uh, I don't know if you can do whatever. that because it's just, there. You'd have to suck the whole thing down, like in one. Well, you know, people are weird. Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I, it's not something I'd want to try just because it, it, you know what? It was salty. Like it, it had a definite salty mm. taste to it. Like that would be kind of weird because you're sucking all that in, and it's like man, you got a lot of salt in your throat. Pass on that one. Uh, the just a note that uh, the fuzzy tauntaun is an interesting one that I, I I like that one because that one is directly out of that one's a, has a banded appearance in two books so far. Uh, it was in the uh, second Thrawn novel when they visited Batu, and then it was also in the uh, Pirates Price uh, uh, Hondo book. I uh, made an appearance in there also. So that one's right out of the uh, Star Wars books. Uh, speaking of something not right out of the book, some interesting casting that has caused some uh, definitely some conversations. I like it. I have no problem with it. Uh, but, of course, you know, people, there's always somebody that's going to have a problem. And that is uh, Little Mermaid. Ariel has been cast uh, The uh, by Halle Bailey of the group Chloe and Halle, I believe that's the name of the group. I don't even group. know who they are. Uh, apparently, there's some group. Uh, people say that they're really good, uh, that she has a really good singing voice, and that uh, she was definitely uh, cast on the merits of her great singing. Uh, it seems like fine casting me. I'm okay with it. Uh, <laughs> one of the, the funniest things about that was that uh, somehow or another... Uh, that uh, her name is Halle Bailey, but somehow or another Halle Berry yes. got to trend in because people don't know how to read. <laughs> you know what? Uh, that happened usual. to me. The mind automatically goes to Halle Berry, even though I saw it. I'm At like, first That's not glance, Halle yeah, Berry. I did too. Yeah. So uh, because of people's at first glance uh, reactions, they got uh, Halle Berry was actually trending for a little while. Uh, but uh, once then, people finally got their bearings and they realized, oh no, it's not the older. Person. It's the one who's actually aged appropriately. Uh, I believe she's 20 or something like that. Yeah, it sounds about right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so it should be fine. Uh, I mean, uh, she def- she has definitely has the singing voice, so uh, we'll just have to see how that goes. Uh, we also got a couple of other Little Mermaid castings, like within a couple days of that, uh, for Scuttle and for Flounder. Uh, Jacob Tremblay, who is a young uh, actor, I don't really know what he's from. I know he's coming up in uh, uh, the Stephen King's Doctor Sleep movie, but I don't know of any him from anything else. But uh, he is a young actor who will be playing. Uh, yeah, Jacob Tremblay is going to be playing Flounder, and then uh, actress Aquafina is going to be playing Scuttle. Aquafina. Yes, the the Asian the uh, com- comedian uh, actress. Is that, I, is that right? Yeah, that's apparently that's how it's pronounced. Okay, this is how you spell it. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I totally thought water. Okay, <laughs> uh, I believe she's a she's a comedian. Uh, she's been in a few movies already. Uh, I believe she was in the uh, Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, I believe she was in that. If not, then she was definitely been in something else. Uh, she's also going to be in uh, the upcoming uh, Dark Crystal. Uh, series oh, yes. on Netflix. Uh, she was just announced to be in that. Uh, she's also going to be in the uh, Jumanji sequel, uh, but she is going to be doing the voice of Scuttle. Uh, and that should be very funny because, uh, like I said, she's a very funny actress. Uh, as opposed to, as a, in relation to the uh, Melissa McCarthy as Ursula announcement, that has not been made official, as opposed to the other three which have been made official. Uh, that is merely a rumor. 
Uh, we don't know. Maybe they'll still cast a drag queen. Uh, what's going to happen with that yet? I'm sure they will make an announcement shortly. Well, my wife was telling me they were talking about it on The View. Yes. Which is Disney owned, no? That's ABC, yeah. Yeah. Mm. This was just saying. Because she had asked me if I'd heard about it, and I'm like, I told her. As far as I know, that's just a rumor. I've seen some YouTube stuff, but of, of like from TV shows where they were talking about it and how. You know, they're applauding the girl and blah, blah, blah. But that, like, there's been a lot of backlash. Yeah, there's been a lot of backlash against Melissa McCarthy. No, not against, no, against <laughs> no, the I, aerial Oh, yeah, casting. I don't care about that, but there's been backlash against Melissa McCarthy, too. I don't care about that either. I don't, I don't care either, but it's like, okay. She's uh, not purple, so, I mean. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I'm sure uh, they make her I got my, my band is in on the uh, the people, uh, you know, Guy Fieri all the way. <laughs> for, for, you saw uh, that? Did you see that? Have you seen all the memes that say, like, yeah. hold on, hear me out. <laughs> Or is that with a picture of somebody else? Uh, also, the uh, the uh, the fan casting of uh, Jesse L. Martin as uh, King Triton. I'm all in for that also. I saw a meme of uh, Terry Crews as uh, yep. Triton. That, that was pretty funny. <laughs> the discussion that I've, that I've heard in regards to the casting is that you've got the team of people that are saying, yeah, awesome, she's going to be great. And then you've got a team of people that are saying, well, wow. then you get a team of racists, and then in addition to that group, you've got another team of people saying, hey, I don't mind if she's black, I just don't think that she fits the character, and that if if the... So the blacks trying to... Are the, so the racists pretending to not be racist. Uh, That's what they said about Michael Keaton as Batman, man. Look how that worked out. Exactly. You know, I can understand that every Disney princess... People identify with. I, no. I identify with the uh, the kid from Treasure Planet. That's who I identify <laughs> with. Um, no, but a lot of these little girls they identify with the princess that they think looks like her them, and you know these redheaded girls. They're growing up their whole lives, and they're I'm Ariel, I'm Ariel, right? And then all of a sudden, why can't they be Pippi Longstocking? Because well, no one knows they who could that have. Is, because dude. no one knows who that is anymore, though. They could though. I mean, if I guess if the four year olds do, you know, seventies research. <laughs> nonetheless i can understand the i don't call it hate but they're disappointed that the character will not be somebody they can personally identify with anymore. good people on both sides right <laughs> i think the zendaya should have gotten the role so does that Zendaya's mean that i'm a racist old. does that mean that i'm a racist She's too old because i've been called racist in the groups i don't know how many times all week for saying i don't particularly care for that girl i have seen her in grownish i don't particularly care for her i think zendaya would have done a better job I th- Zendaya already has something she's doing. Two things, in fact. Perhaps. That's, I'm just uh, telling you my opinion. I would have, wouldn't have minded her, but I think, number one, I think she's too tall. Oh, that's possible. She looks too tall. Uh, if you look at her in Spider-Man or in anything else, uh, we've seen her in real life. She is pretty tall because uh, she she's almost pretty as tall, tall. as uh, Tom Holland. Yeah, yeah. she is uh, very tall, and I think that Ariel is a character that shouldn't be tall. Now, if we would have been able to take a picture with her, we would have referred to her as our friend. Yes. Yes. But uh, Kadeem Hardison is our friend. <laughs> yeah, Kadeem Hardison is our friend. That's Dwayne Wayne, though. That's cool. Yeah. That's- uh, the, uh, but, yeah, the Zendaya would have been great, but no, I think she's too tall. And number, one, and number two, she has things going on already. Uh, she has a series now that she's doing, uh, you know, on HBO. Uh, but uh, so I'm sure she's busy with that. Uh, she's a very busy woman. That's why she had to quit doing, you know, Disney shows. So, no, I think they got they got the the who they thought was the best person for the role. And uh, hater you, haters be damned. No, I'm just wondering uh, what what but, do you think their thought process behind making a major shift like that is? I don't, I don't think that it was even mattered to them. I think they just uh, got the the best person for the role as far as voice and uh, age. And uh, whatever else that they were looking for, uh, whoever the the director is, that's what they wanted, and uh, I think they got it. And I so think it's just a directorial choice. I think they're choice. going for yes. a. I think they're well. Everything should be a dir- is a director. The director choice. said himself that this is a perf- was a she was a perfect uh, person that auditioned, and he just went off. But the it best obviously certainly it certainly helps to uh, have a diverse cast, uh, which is obviously proven by that now that the between. Uh, between uh, Halle Bailey and uh, Aquafina, you have already two, uh, uh, you know, diverse uh, cast members uh, on the project, 
and that always makes uh, projects look good. You, but you at the even, same time, you still, you know, it's still the best, you know, still best person for the job, no matter what. You can't even make the argument that because some people have made the argument, oh well, this one's okay because it's a, it's a number one, it's a fictional character. Number two, well, it's, everything it's, is okay because it's they're under, all it's under the sea. You don't know what you know anybody would look like, but you can't even make that argument about any kind of movie that would take place in a certain country. No, I mean, yeah, I've seen people making the argument. Well, they should, she, there should, shouldn't be anybody dark under the sea because it, uh, everybody would be white under the sea. They'd be translucent. Or uh, there shouldn't be any. Uh, there, all worm, our mermaids should be white. Uh, to which I direct them back to uh, not I, white, translucent. I believe not only the <laughs> Little Mermaid movie itself, but definitely for sure the Little Mermaid animated series in which there was. Oh yeah, there was a yeah. uh, a uh, black. Mermaids. I believe a black mermaid. Yeah, in the was. original <clears throat> Hans Christian Andersen, there's text that des- describe the translucent nature of the mermaid's skin and how they were all pale and such. But this obviously isn't that story. But yeah, then there's Disney's the then adaptation. there's the uh, different. then there's no the uh, the other racist. No one read that. Yeah, right. Uh, no one read the original. <laughs> well, no. Apparently, there's people that think they did because there that is the other group of racists, uh, people who are hiding their racism as a as a legit complaint, saying, "What if they're oh, just well, traditionalists?" There's there's nobody it, there's nobody that uh, would look that way from uh, from uh, from uh, Hans Christian Andersen's uh, uh, you know area. I'm like, well, number one, Prince Eric doesn't look like he's uh, Dutch at all. Uh, the architecture of uh, Prince Eric's castle doesn't look Dutch at Most all. Most Dutch would be light, light brown or blonde. Uh, hair. Number three, uh, I saw a tweet from a guy who's uh, Dutch, and he's black, and he said 100% there are definitely a lot of black Dutch people, so uh, they could all kiss his ass. <laughs> uh, and number three, uh, just to piggyback, it's a fictional character. Who the hell cares? Well, that's that's been their main argument is that uh, no other, basically none of the other Disney princesses um, are completely made up like they're, you know, because she's half fish, right? So if you talk about Elsa, for instance, or there, then she's from that part of the world where it's cold and everyone's white. And if you're Mulan, then you're from an Asian country and you're probably China in this case, right? And Everyone's mostly Chinese. And then, help me out here, guys. Where I don't know where you're going. going. You're, you're digging dead. in your own grave. You're basically no. They're just... saying that that's the reason that this one works to recast. Oh yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah it works you, to you, recast this as a different looking character because it's completely fictional and there's in no my basis opinion, in it works to recast every single character. And the uh, the uh, granted, it's not based on a Disney work, but the uh, the example that people are most uh, Throwing out there is Brandy as Cinderella. Uh, now, granted, people are oh, it's Rogers and Hammerstein. Well, that doesn't matter. It's still it's still it's still Cinderella. It was still Cinderella played beautifully by a black woman. Uh, not to mention also Whoopi Goldberg as the fairy godmother. As the fairy godmother. So well, she's awesome. Anyway. Uh, you know, I mean, whatever. There people can have their excuses. Uh, no matter what, their excuses are always going to be deeply seated in racism. I don't and agree they, with that. Uh, I don't care whether Sometimes you agree with it or not. Sometimes people are just traditionalists. They want things no, that, to stay that the, word, the way that that's a they poor, always that's a, remember that's them. That's a poor argument. There's no such thing as tra- traditionalism when it comes to casting of a freaking fictional character. It's like they could do whatever the hell they want. If you want to make, uh, if you want to consistently see a uh, movie made with white people, we'll go freaking make it yourself not you specifically but people who I'm complain just making about the other, it. the other argument because it's a bit it's been a big yeah, it's so been a know. big discussion and I just good people giving, on both sides you know I know a lot of people that are have rallied for both arguments and well there is no right argument against it it's not against it I understand why it's not something that's uh, people are in favor of I get it and if you're if you grew up with something and you've got it in your head that it's a certain way then you're wrong and you have no room for improvement then apparently you just it's not okay to like things the way they were no you have to have flexibility to accept other things otherwise that's what makes people racist well, i'm still gonna go see the movie well i'm not talking about you specifically <laughs> but you're arguing for those people so you're like you're the one that's being directed towards if somebody's gonna say i'm not gonna go see it that's that's when they're obviously well, they're sh- sh- they're showing their racism well, but obviously somebody no. somebody that just says hey, i guarantee I'll still go you 95 percent of the people complaining about it are not going to see the movie because they people were throwing away their dvd let that sink in. Think about it. 
That's dumb because the DVD is what they already liked. No, I just mean they're still dealing with DVDs. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I threw away some DVDs this week, but none of the Disney ones. Um, so, so on the flip side, this is the another one of the conversations I had was uh, with people's on the flip side. There, oh, we're flipping coins. Um, what if they do a Princess and the Frog remake and they cast somebody that's Asian or white or somebody that's not black? But that doesn't go with the with the uh, with the period with the uh, with the location. Once Regardless, again, you said like, you have to have flexibility, right? So it's. You're the one that specifically pointed out that Little Mermaid is one of those ones that could have anybody because of. Because its... I'm, I'm trying to be open to, here, to all but the you arguments. You can't use the bad example because uh, Princess well, the said, Frog I is said specifically. Mulan, which is set in China. Yeah, in those places are specifically past, set you in said places it was, with. You said that it was okay mind, if that Tim, was somebody else. You're just going to make the argument and you're just going to not accept the, the fact that. Uh, if, well, I'm just trying to have a conversation. If something is uh, set in a specific land that only has specific type of people, you can't just throw somebody in there, a la, uh, you know, Emma Stone or J- Charlotte Johansson, just about anything they've done. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, specifically the Emma Stone in uh, Aloha, where she's playing a Hawaiian. Oh, okay. She was supposed to be a plain Hawaiian woman, but she's white. Uh, she's really or, white. Or uh, Scarlett Johansson in uh, a few different movies where she was Wait, is playing. Where, where's Princess and the Frog set? Isn't it Louisiana? New Orleans, yeah. Louis- yeah. Well, there's white people in New Orleans. Is it there? <laughs> Do you even know the story? Uh, not very well. I've only seen it twice. Well, and then there you go. There's obviously specific story things that have to do with uh, the uh, Creole community and stuff. Okay. You know what's set in China? Mulan. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, we got a Mulan trailer this week. Yes, we did, and I think it looks fantastic. Uh, I just, I don't, real quick, I just, the people who want to consistently bitch and moan about Disney remakes, quote unquote remakes, and shit like that, just freaking let it go. Seriously. It's like, who yeah. the hell, who the hell cares? It's like, why are you guys so intent on hating on the Disney, quote unquote, remakes? Why can't Disney just re. Uh, do a it's not it's well, like most why of do them they have failed though. the only no they haven't none of them have failed not one has failed everybody keeps saying that but not one of them has failed well they had none of them done great no all of them have done fine all of them have done better than movies that were that didn't do fine that that didn't make any sense but well, did, all but of the all of the movies have done fine I don't know where you get your idea from all none of the uh, live action movies have been failures with the exception of maybe through the looking glass, but that doesn't really count because it's, uh, I guess it was a sequel to not uh, to the one. And I don't know that movie just, there was, there was, but Ali G though. Well, there was no, there was no source material for it though, because they had already wasted all the source material in the first movie because the first movie borrowed from both books as opposed to just the first book, instead of keeping the Jabberwocky for the second movie, which they should have done because that's what the second book is about. Anyways, I digress. Uh, the, I'm just, why can't we just have things, you know? I mean, I understand that it'd be nice if we had some a, a whole lot of uh, original ideas, but then, you know what? You people shit on those, too. I Wait, mean, hold on. You can't make that argument against Disney. Hollywood does that all the time. I know. That's what I mean. But why is like, Everybody seems to specifically pigeonhole Disney as the, being the ones, well, they never have original ideas or anything like that. Or Well, when they do have original ideas, you guys shit on them. Tomorrowland, shit on. Uh, what else, Tim? Another example of an original idea Disney movie that somebody that everybody has shit on besides Tomorrowland, basically everything. Uh, well, I mean, some of the original ideas people love, but oh it's hit and miss. Whatever. Anyways, uh, no, I mean, yeah, John they, Carter. Well, yeah, yeah, John. Well, John Carter's not an original idea. That's that's a book. That's, yeah. that's adapted. But uh, the uh, I mean, the thing is, is that there's nobody is going to be happy. And I just don't understand why there's so many people that want to waste their breaths that all they'd ever do is bitch about the Disney remakes. They talk about how terrible they are when they're not. Uh, people consistently uh, cite that Cinderella is like a terrible movie when it's really not. It's like one of the, it's one of the best ones. Uh, people consistently harp on uh, uh, Emma Watson and Beauty and the Beast when I thought that movie was fantastic. Uh you know, it just you guys have to temper. I was your, just waiting for her to whip out a wand. I mean, everything is just uh, you know, 
just, why is there going to be so much hate for all these movies? Just, it just doesn't make any sense I at all. I think that the more that it's just, you it's love just stupid. the original of something, no, that's the harder stu- it is to accept the changes in whatever. The that's new a one. that's a dumb that's a dumb example because Lion King is one of my favorite movies of all is my favorite modern uh, Disney movie and. Uh, you know, and I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it because yeah, but what it's, if a, it's horrible. It's not going to be horrible because there's no reason it's going for it to be horrible. It's the director knows what he's doing. The uh, what we've seen already looks fantastic. The source material is great. I mean, as far as Mulan goes, uh, people seem to be now uh, like, oh, well, I don't know, because it doesn't even look like it's based on the how uh, it, it's not even really an adaptation. Well, if it's directly based on it and it's shot for shot, you guys bitch. Well, this one's not shot for shot, and you guys are still bitching. So it's like you can't make anybody happy. But, uh, you know, basically each to their own, and, well, you guys can all go for yourself. Ranch Ooh. over. We have excellent news. The matchmaker has found you an auspicious match. It is decided. Come and sit down. It is what is best for our family. Yes, I will bring honor to us all. Quiet. Composed. Graceful. Disciplined. These are the qualities we see in a good wife. These are the qualities we see in Mulan. It's my duty to fight. Yeah. Uh, I know there's really not much to hear there other than that that voiceover, but uh, if you guys haven't seen the trailer, you guys should definitely check out. Uh, what do you think, Dan? I'm definitely getting some like uh, Crouching Tiger uh, vibes, some Jet Li movie vibes. Uh, it looks more like that than the animated feature. Yeah, it's thing. definitely... Which I'm uh, good with. I don't, I don't have a problem. We've always uh, been under the impression that this was going to be... Uh, well, the whole thing, uh, which is one of my arguments for the live-action uh, adaptations, with the exception of maybe like Lion King and stuff, is the fact that we are, have gotten a lot of uh, uh, kind of a mix between uh, original source material and the yeah, animated. Yeah, I was actually going to say that because um, as weird as it sounds when I actually taught elementary school, Mulan was one of the stories in the reading book, and it was much different than uh, the story that you get in the animated feature. So one of the things we used to do was to try to schedule some time to, like, okay, let's go through the story and pick it apart the way we're supposed to do it. And then, hey, I'll show you the animated feature so we can kind of tell, like, these are the differences between the Well, maybe somebody that was two. in your class uh, had something to do with this movie. I don't because, know. Uh, A lot of kids went through that reading book, though, so. This is... Uh... It's definitely something that, like I said, I've been talking about for a long time that uh, I think is one of the good things about the the uh, live-action uh, adaptations is that they do have that freedom to uh, uh, go into this original source material as well. You've seen it with, uh, you've seen uh, uh, more stuff with the source material and stuff like uh, Jungle Book mm. had stuff from the source material that we didn't see in the animated. Which, granted, I haven't seen all those. I haven't seen all of them, but I I know a lot of them are a little bit different. I don't have a problem with that. I enjoy them for what it is, a good movie. Yeah, exactly. So. That's why you should just look at it as, as a standalone movie instead of always everybody always has to compare it to the original. I'm not looking for them to break out in song. Well, no, and this know. isn't one of those ones where they're worth fighting for. I'm I mean, as much as I love the as much as I absolutely love the songs in Mulan, I don't really expect any of them to be in this. You no. might you might you it's probably like some of the other ones you probably will get some sort of uh uh, version of reflection and maybe in the in the uh, credits right or something like that uh cinderella was notable that there was several versions of uh the classic songs that ended up in the credits uh, including a version of bibbidi bobbidi boo sung by helena bottom carter which was really good uh maybe you'll get something like that here 
uh, where they uh, do a few of the songs, but they're in the credits instead, so that way it's not d- d- disrupting the, uh, the, the the tone of the movie. Right. Uh, as with also with the tone of the movie, there's been a lot of complaints about the rumor that there's no Mushu, mm-hmm. uh, and that Mushu is instead being replaced by a phoenix. Uh, from what I hear, Phoenix, the Phoenix is from the original story. You've studied the story, obviously. Is no, that... I don't remember that part from the story. Oh, okay. This was years ago, but I, I don't have a problem with that when you think about it because what, what the character of Mushu is supposed to be that kind of guiding uh, conscience thing. If you ever read, uh, did you see the Golden Compass? Yes. Okay, so that, that little thing that's by them, it's basically a demon who's right. kind of the protector and like the conscious kind of thing. If it's something like that, I mean, it, it, it works. You know, there's a really good, uh, better adaptation of that coming up on uh, from the BBC. Oh, The Golden Compass? Yeah. I loved those books. I thought they were fantastic. Yeah, The Mortal Instruments or, or no. No, that's different. Uh, uh, the uh, Subtle Knife and... Uh, whatever whatever the whole series yeah. is called, uh, there's a better adaptation coming up later this year. Oh, wow. Uh, of that, uh, just uh, FYI. Uh yeah, so I, I'm really looking forward to it. It looks great. Uh, the poster was really good. It's really like uh, talk about uh, the the uh, the trailer wasn't really, or you don't really see any homages to the original movie. Uh, but the trailer or the poster is definitely an homage to the original poster. This one looks like it could just be a good kind of action movie. Yeah, rather than you know play off any kind of necessary fair tale or anything. What you say? I was going to say uh, than in any Disney movie. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't look like a Disney movie. No, it, it kind of didn't when I first no. saw it. I've only watched it like once or twice, but it didn't come off that way. But That might I, be a I'm, problem <laughs> moving forward. People like their Disney. I don't think it's a problem. If, we'll a mov- if a movie's good, though, an actual good movie, you'll go see it because it's a good movie, regardless of whether it's Disney or not. So... Just at some point, I worry about the whole, you know, there's always good the crowd that wants to complain about women and leads and, you know, and then, uh, you know. Well, you're reading the wrong one here because that's what this story is. Oh, I know. Yeah. 100%. I mean, like, you know, these people who uh, they, they, they've, because, you know, they're, they're these, there's people who out there who obviously aren't us, who obviously haven't known for over a year that this movie was happening. This is so the, a lot of people. This is the first that they've heard about it. Uh, it was 100% no coincidence that this premiered during the Women's World Cup match. Oh, yeah. Uh, congratulations to the USA. Uh, but this did premiere at uh, halftime of the Women's World Cup match. I guarantee you that was no coincidence. Not at all. Uh, they knew they would have a big, uh, particularly big audience uh, that this would uh, and that's appeal to uh, of women. Right. Well, people in general. Because it, this, right. one, this one, too, was looking at uh, the, the, what was it called? Not the World Cup. Is that the World Cup? The Women's World Cup? Yeah. Yeah. World I'm Cup. not a soccer fan, can you tell? But I, I know a lot of people watched that because it was it was it was the women's team and it was the US, regardless right. of what their thought or anything was. People turned out in droves to watch that. Yeah, so I mean it was definitely no uh no coincidence that that was uh, that, that premiered during that and I think that helped out a lot. Uh will help out a lot with interest. Of, uh, especially particularly, like I said, there's people that probably didn't even know this movie was going to happen until this trailer came out because uh, they're not like us where they know you know things. Uh, they're probably more like Tim where they just either don't know or they forget. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, forgetting is a good idea. Okay. Is Ang Lee directing this? No. Oh, well, that would who, be... who is this? Is the director we know? I haven't looked into that. I don't remember who's directing this. You said Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, so I thought, oh, well, like no, Ang I Lee, just right? Brought no, the, no, no, no. I just said it film. brings... It, 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 Keep in, in, keep in mind of uh, stuff like that. Like you could have seen definitely if this movie had been made uh, twenty years ago, Michelle, you definitely would have been number one pick to play Milan if they had done this. Although I still think that uh, there's no reason why Ming Na Wen couldn't have done it uh, <laughs> either. But you know, heck, Ming Na Wen probably could have done it now. The director is Nikki Coral. Okay. Done anything noteworthy? Or war that we would have known. She directed McFarland USA, The Zookeeper, North Country. Well, McFarland USA is a Disney movie. Yes, it actually wasn't bad. Well, Well Rider. That director has been around for a while because that movie Whale Rider is old. I want to ride a whale. The girls who who was in that Did you was say Jonah? Uh, the girl <laughs> who was in that was the queen of Naboo in uh, Attack of the Clones. Oh, cool. Keisha Knight Castle. All right, so anyways, despite what your uh, inclinations may be, Mulan will be coming out, whether you like it or not. Uh, and Hey, uh, it's interesting that it's going to be coming out in March because that was the same month that uh, Captain Marvel came out, and it made over a billion dollars. So uh, 
And if you don't like the Mulan casting or the story, and you don't like the Little Mermaid casting, then you just go to Disneyland and have a big fight with your family about it. Right. Hey, so real quick, uh, I want to talk about Spider-Man real fast, but I also want to talk about uh, The Simpsons. Uh, Dan brought it up that I don't know if I mentioned it or not that The Simpsons were going to make their uh, grand Disney debut at D23 uh, coming up next month. Uh, So uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, So anyways, uh, Spider-Man Far From Home came out last week. Uh, Of course, it's been out for a whole entire week now because it had an early... Monday night, midnight, in a uh, old school, going old school with the old with the uh, midnight twelve oh one showing. I was there on Monday night at twelve oh one to watch it in IMAX. Uh, we got a cool little, uh, well, I don't know if it's really cool, but a little Spider Man figurine, uh, plastic Spider Man figurine. Uh, one of our two Spider Mans were missing an arm, uh, so that was kind of a bummer. I wish I had opened the one that wasn't missing the arm first. And then I could have kept the other one in the package. But uh, right. So anyways, uh, Spider-Man has been out for a week now. And uh, it has uh, had a couple milestones, of course, Toy. over the weekend. Uh, s- number one, Spider-Man. Uh, now, first of all, I'm going to say that Spider-Man is on track to become the first ever Spider-Man film to reach, reach a billion at the worldwide box office uh, right now. That is it. what it is on track for. The first Spider-Man movie. First Spider-Man movie of all Spider-Man movies, in other words. So a lot of the... Yeah. Now, eight Spider-Man movies. This No, six Spider-Man movies. Uh, this one is the first one to be on track. I have to say that, personally, I rank it as the uh, well top five of all MCU movies, and I put it third, or maybe a, like a three-way tie for first, or maybe two-way tie for second, uh, as far as all Spider-Man films, because Spider-Man 2 is always going to be like X-Men 2. I mean... Despite anything that you, anything that we'll ever have to say about uh, the uh, how much of a piece of crap uh, uh, the director ended up being, uh, X Men Two is always going to be like one of the best uh, superhero films, and then and Spider Man Two is just revolutionary like, for its time. Uh, Spider Man Two is just almost a perfect film. I mean, the whole the whole dichotomy bef- between him and Doc Ock and the acting from uh, both uh, Toby and even uh, particularly from Alfred Molina, who has always been to me an underrated. Uh, actor all the way to him being forgotten in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, Toss it to me. Yes. And uh, that's I don't, just such I don't a great hate movie. Him. I don't hate him, but he's, I don't know about underrated. What? He did really well in that movie. Which, in which one? In as, as Spider-Man 2. As Doc yeah, Ock. Yeah. It's amazing. You know who did good? Jake Gyllenhaal. You think so? Oh, he did a fantastic Oh, Jake job. Gyllenhaal was I mean, fantastic. he did good at being kind of, like kind the of good guy and Gyllenhaal the right bad guy at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, spoilers. First of all, uh, no, no. That's not a spoiler if you know anything about the comics. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, the uh, I just want to say that anybody who hasn't seen the movie yet, you definitely guys gonna definitely get definitely gonna need to get to see it. Uh, but I do want to say that about the movie itself, uh, that uh, the uh, the marketing was uh, done phenomenally. Uh, there was a lot of people bitching uh, on uh, social media about how they thought that uh, Sony was intentionally releasing trailers with a lot of spoilers in them. Uh, oh, no. To, to be jerks. Yeah. Uh, right to end up including the, uh, a trailer that they released, like, what, days before the movie came out that included a shot from one of the after credit scenes. But uh, there's no spoilers in that, and it's not really that important. It, the part that they show is not really that important. Uh, it is from one of the after credit sequences, but... Uh, I just thought that was amusing. You, you, did you see that trailer? Uh, uh, no, I have to talk. It to included about which MJ right and oh, Peter swinging. Landing, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's and that. her saying, "I don't ever want to do that again." After that, though, Woo. after that, all bets were off. But that was not in the trailer. Thank that's goodness. Yeah. But I just want to say, like I said, people were accusing Sony of uh, a lot of spoilers, <laughs> zero spoilers uh, yeah. in context of the movie. Uh, basically, what they showed you in the trailer was nothing. Uh, and but, there uh, was no way that you could possibly identify the uh, the storyline of that movie no, from the trailers. I know you haven't seen it yet. Did you see it, Tim? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. This is one of the top. I mean, it was Th- good. It was really a... good. I The things that I really liked about it were more of the MCU tie-in stuff. Um, yeah, I see that. But I, I thought it was just a good movie. It ranks up there as like 
I do rank as it as far as Spider Man movies go. It's the best Spider Man movie. I, I got to give it but, over even Spider Man too. I think it, this is the best one. You know, it's interesting though that uh, I, I need to see I it hate, again. I hate to uh, agree with Tim, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but I do have to uh, just point out something that does support what Tim, Tim just said because I did see something from uh, the director Watts. Uh, who specifically said that Spider-Man Far From Home ranked it as far as, first, it's a MCU movie, second, it's a Peter Parker movie, and thirdly, it's a Spider-Man movie. In other words, that's the ranking of how he pictured the movie overall, is that it means more to the MCU than the other things, and that Peter Parker is more... In other words... Spider Man was kind of a, it was a secondary character. Well, third, if anything, well, yeah. well, <laughs> if compared to like the whole MCU and Night Monkey, uh, Night Monkey definitely. Just to talk about the box office real quick, uh, the uh, Spider Man Far From Home did three hundred ninety five or across three hundred ninety five million overseas. That was as of uh, I believe the weekend, uh, and it has crossed uh, near. It probably has crossed six hundred million globally now. Uh, and then in North America, it generated 105, 185 million over the six days. Uh, it's actually currently pacing ahead of uh, Captain Marvel and Spider Man Homecoming in international box office. Do you think it's a little bit of a tough six days? Because I saw it on Friday. Well, it's always a tough. Uh, Fourth of July is not the best weekend to put a movie. Yeah, on. it's well, always tough. Number one, when you release a movie on a technically on a Tuesday. Uh, but then, you know, you look at it, the fact that it's two days before for or three days before the 4th of July, they consider it the 4th of July week. There's, it's not the first time that you've had movies released during the week. You see all movies released on Wednesdays. Oh all, yeah. All the time. All the time, like yeah. on uh, Thanksgiving or something. So, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. I just because this is such a big, I don't know, just this, it's being summertime and all that. I mean, the fact that it's already that pacing kind of ahead of uh, other movies, uh, particularly, I mean, you can't really compare it to uh, Captain Marvel because of the time of uh, year that Captain Marvel was released. It should be pacing ahead of Captain Marvel, but the fact that it's pacing ahead of uh, Homecoming is, uh, is definitely important uh, and that it'll definitely reach up there and, the, uh, you know, be number one. Uh, just to just get a few more thoughts and then we'll be done with that. Any uh, additional In- thoughts interesting about Interesting take it? on the Mysterio character himself. Oh, 100%. That's, that's percent. I liked it. it. Uh, there's definitely stuff that's uh, right out of the comic books. Uh, there's, you know, I've seen people like, uh, you know, make comments, and I agree that uh, uh, even if you don't know who I'm talking about, uh, you get the idea that there were there were shots in that that were basically pan, uh, John Romita Jr. Uh, drawings come to life. Yeah, uh, He did a lot of the Spider-Man art in the late 70s and early 80s and just some of the most definitive Spider-Man stuff there is. Absolutely. Uh, that, you know, there's just uh, so many people that just say that at heart that uh, despite what the director says, this is definitely a pure uh, 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 Spider-Man movie. And uh, there's even people that have, uh, main, that have said that Mysterio is the best done Marvel villain of the entire MCU. Could possibly be. And I would have... Fantastic uh, I have, connections to the MCU in some of the flashback scenes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the whole connection with uh, Stark and all that stuff. Yeah, and, uh, that's fantastic. You know, just uh, that all that is really amazing. And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> I really want to talk about the, the after credits, but it's just uh, man, the, 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 uh, the second after credits, I'm just going to say the, the possibilities are... Uh, and I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to refer you back to... Uh, uh, I believe we had this discussion before about, uh, I'm just going to say, uh, in Age of Ultron, Fury cut his uh, bread diagonally. Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, he amazing. was amazing. amazing. As yeah. was Zendaya. I've always liked Zendaya, but this I just, was... Uh, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same people that hated, uh, that are the same women haters that hated Brie Larson, or because I keep seeing people <clears throat> talk about how wooden Zendaya's uh, performance was, and I'm like... Are you people the same people that hated Brie Larson because she's a woman you called her performance wooden or because you're just because you're that much of a misogynist or do you are you just that blind to uh, good acting? That's I mean, a character I just, trait. I just don't understand. Uh, I mean, I thought she was fantastic. I mean, she portrayed uh, an angsty uh, teenage girl perfectly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she has That's had, my daughter. She's literally <laughs> had practice doing it for, I don't know how, for however long, uh, you know, uh, years that she was doing uh, Casey Undercover. She was playing 
a teenage girl. I mean, she was a teenage girl herself not that long ago. Right. I think she knows what the hell she's doing. My daughter loved it. Absolutely loved it. And she's not really one to watch movies. I, I take her to see them because it's just kind of a thing that we do. But this was the, the first one in a long time. She's been like, I really like that movie. I think part, some of it was partially Tom Holland because <laughs> she's at that age. <laughs> but she genuinely, like, we laughed. We enjoyed the story. She was like, I kind of want to see it again. All right. So speaking of uh, D23 Expo and also Dirty. speaking of reflections from Mulan, uh, just as with last year, I believe it was, uh, uh, was it uh, uh, Whoopi Goldberg who was added last minute la- uh, last year as a uh, as Disney a legend? Uh, they have once again added another Disney legend last minute, and that is Christina Aguilera. Cool. Who, of course, uh, you know, I mean, if anybody uh, is has any doubts about her, uh, her uh, legendariness, her uh, legendariness. I was just thinking uh, her uh, resume as a uh, yeah, as a Disney legend. Uh, we'll we'll just take you back to uh, when she was a Mouseketeer number one. I mean, how much more? Uh, you know, do you need more than that? But also, uh, yeah, she did the pop version of uh, Reflection. For the uh, Mulan soundtrack, uh, which is actually one of my favorite of all of the uh, the pop uh, versions of all the Disney songs, and then uh, of course she's also been on Dancing with the Stars. Uh, she's been on Dick Clark's New York Rock and Eve. On ABC. Uh, she's also been on Nashville, the show Nashville. Yeah, so uh, congratulations to Christina Aguilera joining. All of the other, uh, the Marvel uh, or fandom, I, what I would say, f- another fandom heavy uh, Disney Legends uh, crop, along with the aforementioned uh, Ming Na Wen, Robert Downey Jr., Favreau, James Earl Jones, Bette Midler, Kenny Ortega, and so on. Hey, so you know what I, I like to reflect on sometimes? What's that? Uh, how much mail we have. Oh, well, we have one email. That's lame. See, that's why I don't like to reflect on it too much. <laughs> <laughs> and it's from Giselle the Gazelle. Hey, I know her. And her subject line is Stranger Danger. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. She says, what is up, my brothers? Happy birthday. Love that part of every podcast. Hey, mine's in three weeks. Exactly. Oh, I, I have to write that down on the calendar somewhere. There's one right there. That's not my calendar. Well, you can write it down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not much to report this week. I watched Toy Story again. Man, you all being haters over there. Ooh. I'm not saying it was the best movie of, of the year, but I enjoyed it. It was funny. Nobody's going to say that. I cried at the end because Woody had to say goodbye. Bye. I cr- oh, spoiler. <laughs> I cried at the Oops. beginning because him and Bo Peep had to leave each other. Haven't y'all ever had a broken heart? Come on. Uh, probably at some point. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to go cry outside. Hold on. <laughs> In other news, getting ready to leave for Walt Disney World this weekend with my cousins and grandma flying in from California. Party of eight coming through, please. Our fast passes are made and my clothes are almost packed. Hope everyone is doing great and partying hard. Love, G. P.S. I listened to the podcast in the car with my eight-year-old sister, and she could not believe you were reading a letter I wrote. She was like, how? Are you live? (laughs) Are they reading it right now? Who are those men? (laughs) Stranger danger. (laughs) You know, the first time my kids heard me listen to something, they're like, they're talking about you? Yeah. (laughs) You. (laughs) They know you? (laughs) Yeah. I was like, yes. Uh, That's funny. Stranger hey, how, far, how far are her parents from Walt Disney World? I don't know. I feel like she's there all the time. Yeah, I know. I have no, I'm not sure. I've never asked her. All right. Thank you for your email, Giselle the Gazelle. We appreciate that. All right. Before Dan gets to his, I'm going to um, read some comments from Ernesto from the YouTubes. Uh, episode 169, Runaway Water Fountain. <laughs> Uh, he's comments Tomorrowland. Hopefully, we'll finally get some love. We're talking about uh, hopefully they'll be redoing Tomorrowland sometime soon. Maybe possibly be announced uh, on uh, D23. D- yeah, D23. Uh, he also says on that episode, most of the drinking fountains had low pressure and always were warm. 
Well, if you ran it for a little bit, it, it actually cooled off. It's just the pipes. Yeah. And don't forget, it has that white magical water. Also, uh, it says, TMI on Tim's mid-shower en- emergency. I do not want to go back to that episode and hear what that was about. <laughs> Let's see. Having to poop. Oh, you remembered. <laughs> it's the only thing it could have been about, you know? <laughs> okay. I, 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 now it, it, it's uh, coming back to me. I think I must have blocked it out. I remember that. Yeah, he also says on that episode, uh, happy birthday, Tim. Thanks. All right, episode 178. <laughs> you got to bring a friend in me. He says the, the Mulan trailer dropped today. I can't wait to see it. Uh, episode 168, The Rise of Disney Plus. He says, you're around Iron Man. <laughs> that was awesome. All right. Well, thank you for those comments there, Ernesto. All right. Take it away, Dan. Oh, I, what did I do? Uh, well, I went to Batu, back to Batu on the 3rd to check out the fireworks from Batu. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, it is nice. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, you need to watch them in front of the Falcon. The second level actually is no good for that. You can't watch it from the second level because the lights are in the way. They don't dim the lights or anything over there. And there is no, they call it a celebration. The celebration takes place at this time. I was wondering what they were calling that. Celebration. I, okay. Yeah. Um, they, cause they had people, cause people were asking, what are these people standing around for? They're not fireworks. For, they're not fireworks. No. Although the celebration, they, I don't remember what they said it was for, but it was a celebration going on. None of the lights are dim, nor do you get any, any type of music. Other, you, all you get is the fireworks over the spires. And the Falcon, which is really cool. Bottom level by the Falcon, which is what Diggs actually told me. He just said over by the Falcon. But I figured out second level, no good because of the lights. Go down to the front. Get I mean, that makes sense because all uh, almost all of the pictures I've ever seen of people taking pictures of the fireworks mm-hmm. from Galaxy's Edge seem to be near the Falcon. Yeah. Because almost always the, <laughs> the Falcon's in the foreground and then you see the fireworks. Right. It's definitely the best place so, uh, to watch them from there. It makes sense. I, I did go around and get some more pictures, which you can find in my Instagram account, Dan's Disney Adventures. Just a bunch of pictures that I take of the things that we do uh, there because I got a bunch of them on my phone. Uh, but we did that. I went through and I figured out some more about how to work the play app, about how to do some of the stuff, completed a bunch more missions. I just spent the entire evening there. Did try the, I forgot to talk about this in fat time, the Nuna turkey jerky. You're a turkey jerky. Thank you. Um, I tried it. It's okay. I don't. That's the one they have at Ronto uh, Roasters. Ronto's, yeah. yeah. I've it's seen actually pic- not I've bad. Seen pictures of My it. My brother liked it. I think I have an aversion to turkey in any form other than a sandwich or in the traditional sense. Do you cut it diagonal? I cut it diagonal. Um, I, did, I, don't even, I don't even like turkey tacos. That's not, I'm not a fan of them. So I, I think this, like was, this was it. it. It was kind of we had the sweet one. There's a sweet one and the spicy one. We had the sweet one, and it was it was okay. Uh, I personally wouldn't get it again. I think my brother liked it enough that he, he would do it. And I think he still wants to try the the spicy one. So we did that, and then we uh, characters. We saw um, the Diagona again, and the thing I got a better video of that, which I put up on my Instagram page. And then we the characters Ray and Chewbacca were having a. A contest or having a, a Chewbacca growling contest. Have you guys seen this online? <laughs> Have you seen this online? The Chewbacca growling contest. No. Che- Chewbacca and Ray were there. Chewbacca was leading a growling contest. He was getting guys who could do the Chewbacca growl, and he was getting the audience to kind of vote on who the winner was. He did it in rounds, so you know, people would go up, brrr, do their thing. You know, some of them were good. Some of them were complete trash. <laughs> some of them were forky. forky? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then trying to narrow it down to the winner, he got to the last two winners, and he said, "Okay." Let's really try them out, guys. Let's turn them this way. Act like the people over there are imperial troops coming this way. Give them your best growl. And as soon as you got them to do that, they dipped. They took uh, off. <laughs> they, they straight left. Bye. Took off. The guys, the, the people, the last two finalists turned around and were like, oh, they took off. <laughs> like They just totally walked away. That's a good one. And went backstage, as a matter of fact. It wasn't even like anywhere close. So that was pretty cool. Lots of stuff to see. Even if you don't get on the rides and, and do that, there's all kinds of interactions with the characters. It's actually kind of fun to do. I did that morning make a reservation for the cantina. I did it about, I don't know, probably about 10 o'clock in the morning. I made a reservation. I was trying to get something around 10 o'clock in the evening, and the app told me the only time we have, uh, the soonest time to that is 1045. So I did it. Only did about 10-minute wait. Again, tried one of the alcoholic drinks this time because I think I've tried all the non-alcoholic ones now. Oh, no. They had the, what's the one that has the, like, fuzzes all over, the non-alcoholic one that has the little pearls in it? I forgot what it was called. I'm not sure. That looked good. One of the guys at the table had that, and it looked uh, pretty good. They also had the snacks. 
uh, they had ordered that little snack plate, which uh, I'm not so sure about. You know, I went, just in the, I went in the morning. Uh, we, I didn't think we'd be able to get a reservation later on, so I made a right at 7 a.m. We were there anyway getting pins. Yeah. Uh, so I went right on my thing, app, booked the thing for 9 a.m. I think we actually walked up around 9.15. It was no big deal, and they were just letting people in randomly. That's not always the case because when, it, when it's busy, if you're late for the app like that, if you're late for your time, you can get screwed out of that. So yeah. That's what I've heard. So we went at like 9.10, 9.15, and uh, the um, they pretty much let us right in. It was within five minutes. And then they sat us in a booth, and then we ordered. We ordered like a – she had a non-out. She had the Porg one, and I had like the other – or no – I had the Yub Nub and she had something else. And then the we had the, the breakfast items. We yeah. had the overnight oats. Yeah. And we had the which is basically just a cinnamon roll, but it's like a little chocolatey. It's like chocolate stuff sprinkled on it kind of. But that's basically the only two food items that they yeah, sell. Yeah, it's not a lot there. of food options. It's that they have a the overnight oats were really good. The things that were inconsistent about it were like the fruit stuff that they put in it. They have, like, pieces of fruit they put in there. Is it pre-made, too, like the drinks? Yeah. I mean, it seems like, well, overnight oats, they have to pre-make at least the night before. Mm -hmm. So that's why it gets the consistency. But the flavor of the actual oats were really good. Probably one of the better overnight oats that I've ever had. When I went in, Rex wasn't working. Not at all? Not at all. What was he doing? Was there any music? This. Was there any music? Yeah. Was Just house music. Was he on the recordings? Uh, not that I recall. No, actually, hmm. I, I wasn't paying enough attention to do that, but I don't remember him saying anything. Because usually he's like, "Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's like makes sounds and stuff." So no, I don't remember hearing that at all. But Maybe no, he wasn't played. working at all. So it didn't sound like the music from the previous time when mm, you were in there. I get. I, you know what? I'm going to tell you no because I didn't hear the Cantina song, and it plays every of like every thirty minutes or so. Yeah, and I was in there for quite a while because it's I the first time I went into the Cantina. I went up to the bar and ordered my drinks. This time I let the waitress handle it, which took a lot longer. Which well, I didn't care. I wasn't, you know, doing anything. I didn't have any other plans. Right. But, you know, we shut the park down in there and then left after that. But that's what I got going on uh, this week. Uh, this weekend I'm actually going to San Francisco. I'm going to be visiting the Walt Disney Family Museum. Sweet. So the next time I'm I'm here, I'll probably talk about. It's a good one. That a little bit. Uh, and then Comic Con next week, so we'll see what we got over there. And then I am one of the lucky ones going to Celebration, so I got a hotel and a um, four day pass. Cool. All right. So hey, if you guys have any, you want to uh, let us know what you guys have going on, or what your thoughts are on uh, anything coming up in the parks. Hey, we still have the Haunted Mansion. They still have tickets for the Haunted Mansion uh, thing, my Bob. Three hundred dollar thing. I, whatever yeah, it's it costs. Coming up a month from now. Yeah, those tickets are still available. You can get those. And uh, don't forget, we still have uh, available. Well, they still have the Oogie Boogie Party Halloween Party thing going on. That's those tickets are still available. So go grab those. But hey, if you have any thoughts on those or anything else, or I don't know, if you have uh, stories about Stranger Danger, all you have to do is email us mousefire at gmail dot com. You know I think my brother tomorrow. I'm going to go to the park tomorrow. And my son wants to ride Grizzly River Rapids, so we're going to get on. I think my brother's going to take one of Michael's. Tip of the week and take a change of socks. Oh, I, I'm voting. Don't forget. Gonna, don't forget. I'm voting is going to end up taking a buying a pair of Crocs because <laughs> his shoes get wet. Do you have a special occasion coming up? Looking to personalize your trip with a keepsake? Create customized buttons for birthdays, engagements, family vacations, even bridal parties, or just because. Check out buttonsbydigs.com today. Buttons by Digs. Buttons by Digs. Remember, those are buttons, not pins. All right, it's going to do it for this episode of the Mouse Power Podcast. Hey, thanks for joining us, Dan. Hey, sorry I was a little late. Better uh, late than never, I guess. Yeah, I, I think I explained that actually. Yeah, at least unlike cool. last week where you made me pull out the chair for nothing. <laughs> I've shown up late before. But he doesn't have to pull out the Not chair as many for times as Dan, but I've shown up late before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a busy guy. What do you want? Yeah, Dan uh, had some uh, tra- traffic problems with the fallen ad at. Yeah, that was dirty. <laughs> was I, I bet good, you I'm still going to see that when I go it's home. It's a good right thing now. that I stayed home and finished Stranger Things and didn't rush over. Oh, I I can't leave for another half hour. Wait, you just now finished that? Well, yeah, we watched it all together. All right, don't forget, uh, Sound Station Oat will end its run on July 17th. Bye. Also, Disneyland's birthday. And we get Mickey's uh, fantastic 
band coming on, uh, what was it, on July 18th on the next day? Nikki's Craptastic Filler Brids. There you go. Uh, I don't even, yeah, filler, just the, just one word. Filler. Are you are you going to make an attempt to watch Sensational a few times before it leaves? I will be there on July 17th. You, well, yeah, of course we're going to go that day. But I won't be there for the 18th for the new filler. No, oh, no, no be, nobody be, suggested the, that you should be. The 17th is my wife's birthday, too, so it's always difficult to work in the... All right, don't forget uh, Oogie Boogie's birthday party or Halloween birthday party, whatever he's having going on over at DCA Tickets. It's a bash! <laughs> it's still, tickets are still available for that, so grab those tickets. Also, if you uh, got one of those uh, uh, forky plush uh, doll things... Keep it. It's a collectible. Keep put it. it <laughs> nope. Put it in the trash. <laughs> don't don't eat the eye. <laughs> don't eat the eye. Put it in the trash where Forky belongs. It's where he wants to be. Respect Forky's wishes. He has a do not resuscitate. <laughs> uh, yeah, keep him th- or send him back or whatever you want to do. It's up to you. Um, yeah, that's about it. And don't forget, uh, get your Fat Time AP button uh, over there at DCA by mobile ordering at over there at, uh, what was it again? Uh, Corn Dog Castle. Award Wieners. Award Wieners. Whatever the brews place was. The brews over there next to uh, and Lucky, Sully Stephanie. Uh, Lucky Fortune Lucky Cookery. Fortune Dragon. Yeah, get your Fortune Dragon cookie. And <laughs> yeah, they have pot stickers. Uh, but, just a note real fast. Uh, speaking of uh, plushies, I, real fast, I forgot to mention that uh, I know we don't obviously don't have a... Uh, uh, build a bear here at uh, Downtown Disney more, but if there are build a bears around that you guys still have access to, there are some Lion King uh, build a bears that are being released, including a really amazing, cool looking Pumbaa. Oh, I gotta check that out. Yeah. You could spend eighty bucks by the time you get out of there. Buy the bear, buy the costume, buy the shoes. Yeah, no kidding. You're a Pumbaa. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so of course you can follow along with all the fights and the earthquakes and everything else over on our social medias. We're Mousepire on Facebook, at Mousepire on Twitter and Instagram, Mousepire on the on the snappy Snapchats, maybe sometime you guys, if you're on Snapchats at the right time, either you can catch an earthquake or a fight. <laughs> or hopefully neither, because well, let's hope neither happens again. But, you know. Snip, the, snappity, snoop. You know where we are. Hey, if you want to follow along on my Disney adventures, you can find me on Instagram at Dan's Disney Adventures. Just something fun I kind of started. So you can see some stuff. Been gaining followers. Got featured on the SoCal Instagram page today. Thanks, Jose. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. But yeah, we're there doing that extraordinary culture podcast. This podcast, of course, if I'm not here live in the palatious <laughs> Mouse Power Studios, you can usually catch me emailing and hanging out with these guys on the side. Uh, you know, can also catch both of us on the uh, the Cap Fab the Culture uh, podcast. podcast which we need to do, which it's we'll be busy. doing coming up uh, probably uh, either this week or probably the middle of next or, week, or uh, r- probably right after uh, uh, Extreme uh, Rules. Yeah, uh, that's that's when I. So uh, if you guys are uh, like hearing a little wrestling, uh, you guys can sh- check wrestling. that out. You can follow me on Instagram at Blue1313. Also follow Buttons by Dings on Instagram. There you see your button order going out. I have a button order that I need to do, but I lost the design. So I've got to redo the whole design. That's dirty. That sucks. You can get uh, some mouse power gear over at DGPclothing.com or get your own gear. Send me a message and I'll create whatever you would like. And don't forget, you can check out the podcast over on the YouTubes. Just search Mouse Power Podcast. And uh, what else we have going on? Hey, Pigs will make you a shirt that says uh, something out of, straight out of Toontown. Oh, yeah. There yeah. you go. <laughs> I saw him posting about that. Somebody yeah, said, I need this shirt. He goes, well, I can make it for you. <laughs> straight out of Toontown. Yeah, there you go. And then don't forget, you can uh, also help support the podcast over at Patreon.com slash Mouse and I get the Michael the Mill Guy $3 special. And you can also listen to us over at radio.com. Ooh. Radio. So yeah, check out the Mouse Power there. Mouse Power Podcast there. Just subscribe and uh, you'll get uh, notified as soon as that uh, gets uh, posted. And I noticed that radio.com, uh, the, the podcast is posted as quickly as, as it is on, uh, on iTunes. And uh, still, Stitcher sucks because it takes forever for that to upload. I don't know why. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. And until next time, remember, fight! So for Cameron Boyce, Rip Torn, and Artie Johnson, I'm Anthony. I'm Tim. I'm Dan. I'm Diggs. Bye. Bye. Call up a Hammerhead Corvette. I have an idea. Well, you want the bad news or the really bad news? I'll take any news you got. Bleep, blappity, bloop. Bloopity, bleepity, bleep. 
This podcast is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. Audio, sound bites, and other clips are property of their copyright holders. All original stuff is ours and property of mousepire.com. Let's get ready to wumble. <laughs> it's a Toon Town fight. Spider Man, Spider Man, he does whatever a spider can. Spider Pig, Spider Pig, does whatever a pig can dig. That's not what that word. Well, it rhymes, though, and that's what's important. Monsters After Dark!